All right, so we'll go ahead. Um, you guys set. We'll uh, call the meeting to, your, to order. It's uh, the Moore Town Select Board. Guys, we're starting the meeting here. It's, uh, select Board, it's uh, Monday, May 1st. And we'll go ahead and go with general public comment. So I think, Neil, you were probably first for that. No. She's here for something else. Oh, okay. So I was uh, I was inquiring about uh, the bond trap at three houses because I know that they're advertising it and they're saying they're creating the second one which will be ready this spring or whatever this summer. And so uh, now I'm, uh, now I'm just trying to figure out: uh, Are they allowed to do this? Um, and and they have, have a business still, even though they're not zoning or anything? I know uh, zoning had been working with them. I think they had denied a permit, if I'm correct, yeah. and went to the DRB, uh, I think a week or two ago. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, so I've discovered today that it's in the environmental court. Okay. I don't know anything about it. I thought, okay, I heard environmental court, and I said, okay, so because the reasons they denied it, one was because it's not an environmentally friendly area. And then, so I didn't know, is it environmental court? I'm asking the question. Could overrule the DRB on everything? I. I think so. I mean, I think again, it's, it's so, the difference is that it's the highest court with environmental within the state. Okay. So I think they could probably overrule um, the town, sure, certainly. Mm. So no matter what the DRP says about uh, uh, having a campground up there, they'll overrule it. And that's uh, no, I don't think they. It's it's not their job to overrule it. They they'll look at the evidence and determine that. It was done correctly uh, to the law. They're not making law. They're just making. They're interpreting the law, with, with okay. what has been presented so to them. When the town has the laws in front of it and they made decisions upon that, which seemed like they were accurate, I think everybody to be able. So, if they changed it and allowed for a campground up there, whatever you want to call it, sure. <clears throat> Would we have, I guess we have a lawyer, I found out today. Oh, yeah, we have lawyers, please. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't know that they were going to do this. I, you know, so. So then, then I would um, believe that we would have an opportunity to appeal the environmental court. I, I, okay. I think you can go maybe to the Supreme Court, John. Is that how that would yeah, work? Yeah, I've never been in this situation. Um, I mean, but. I will make the um, the zoning administrator aware of what you've shared with us tonight as far as what's still going on. I, and I don't know, I didn't read the, the findings from the DRB, but I, and I don't know if they're still allowed to continue uh, operations or... Who knows that? Well, I, I, think, I think it will probably be in the determination from the DRB. And then the question would be, who um, enforces it? Right, that's believed by the zoning administrator. But, I mean, you, usually, usually, though, um, Notice you know, the town, right. the town Karen was talking about it. <laughs> usually the town is, uh, you know, when they make the decision, it's usually followed right. you know, by environmental right. court I mean, and so on. So, fine for doing things, you know, continue building and all this stuff after they've been asked to stop. I, I don't know. And then if they rent it, all these these two places, and we don't have a 911 address, is that? I'm trying to figure out who's really in charge. <laughs> yeah, well, I think if this um, judge or the courts, the courts are in charge of it. What? Uh, at this point, uh, and I think you, you share with us, they're in the bio, environmental court. So they're the ones that uh, are in charge. If they don't rule and they're already in, if they're in business already and if they enlarge their business 
and there is no 911 address. Is that? Well, that's why I, I told you I would let Karen know what we've learned tonight, and if that is in fact uh, in violation of what the ruling is, and then we would find out, uh, all right, is it the court that enforces us? Typically, the town has to enforce the court to uh, enforce whether it be fines or, or such. Okay, so, you know, I've been on this case for a little bit. So, so Paula said the environmental, people can continue doing what they're doing until the environmental court makes a decision. All right, so it sounds like you know the law, so you, no, why did you ask us? But, I, but, he's, but I'm questioning it because it's a business, and they're carrying out a new business that is, has a danger. That's no 911 address. Uh, the, can the trucks get up there if there's a fire? I personally just went through zoning on two houses. I had to make the road wider and do all these things. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, who is well that's why Neil you, you just shared with the, that with us tonight okay and for the third time I'm going to tell you okay. we're going to let the zoning administrator know and then follow up with if that's in violation of what the okay. DRB you know unfortunately the town does not have the policing powers that most people would like or probably that we we might like just right. to be you know judge executioner and and such and they all go through uh a process that's sometimes slower than we'd all like but again you're dealing with a town so in order for a town to make decisions five of us need to be around the table and we need to discuss it this um issue that you're talking about is, is been out of the select board hands from day one. This has been a zoning um, violation, it, it appears. Um, and so she has been, uh, Karen, our zoning administrator, has been following up with it and pursuing it right through um, the, the system she's that's, like, that's- She's on the thing. I just, you know, it comes to me all of a sudden, like I did report some stuff that her, that they were continuing doing. And all of a sudden, I'm, I look at it and they're, they're advertising in the second place, and that's why I'm all riled up. Yeah, no, that's I am repeating myself. <laughs> no, and I understand your frustration. I yeah. would uh, be as well, especially if uh, they've been told that they can't do this. And I haven't read uh, what the findings were. If they're in violation and they're continuing to do it, I can't see the courts looking favorable upon that either. Um, eventually, these things do um, find their their finality and yeah. I think you're you're we're well, getting closer. Yeah the bottom line is we just need to get an update. Either yeah. from the zoning administrator or from There we know. go. And now that we have Neil's input we can say this is what's going on. Wow. Well, and is there anything else that should be included? I, I didn't the realize the environment of court can like overrule the DRD on basically any decisions. I think they would they wouldn't overrule the DRB. They would they would enhance the DRB. They could say no, that is not allowed on environmental concerns, and then it could go back to the DRB on any other concerns. I don't believe if it you know, violates say any other said, standards. You, you have to have a prime, you know. I'm sorry to take that. I don't think it's okay. You have to have a primary residence in order to have a secondary residence. Yeah. Now. Can the environmental court overrule that? No, again, they're, 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 you know, I think uh, they're, they're, not, they're not a court just to make law. They are following the law, and what they do is they interpret the laws that we have, whether it, they start with the, the state statutes okay. and, and the town statutes, and they try to interpret to make sure that we all are following, and there's not case law okay. that states that this has been done Okay. And this is the, the outcomes of it. But um, in the meantime, the town has missed out on all the revenue from have, not having their place assessed. I'm just kind of going over these things. And building more, it's never been assessed. And I don't know about the taxes. But well, you can't assess it because it's not illegal. So what? it can't be assessed because it's not legal. And that's why I, it's I, not I, assessed. I, I, the whole thing is illegal. That's why. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.
All right, and next up with um, have a nice night, Neil. See you, Neil. Um, general public comments. I have one. Um, Nicole, I live across the street at 1013, and I was just wondering how is that going? I know that the February the court's found starting to gather contempt, and supposedly he's being fined. I don't know if he's paying these fines, but the same contractor that's been making maps and everything over there has been showing up again, tearing things down, threatening to remove things. Retaliating, just you know, standing outside our doors, talking, you know, getting involved. Sure. The court order states that the contract needs to be approved by the select board. I understand Frank has not made an effort to reach out to you. Um, I also understand Gray is no longer on the select board, so I'm just wondering who the contact person is, what the next steps are. I'm feeling like my safety is in jeopardy, as well as my my quality of life and. I really have not a lot to advocate for the conditions of all the Frank Piazza's properties, and I just want to check in with the board. Sure. We are, thank you for uh, for coming tonight, Nicole. We are going to be discussing that. Uh, we are going to go into executive session. Um, since our last meeting, we have uh, tried uh, a few things that has been unsuccessful. So, uh, Dick uh, Valentinetti, your health officer, and me uh, had a conference call with Ron Shems, our lawyer, this afternoon. And we are, um, after executive session, I expect that we will um, vote on uh, action. So if you want to wait around for an hour or so, or come back in an hour or so, or jump on Zoom, or get the notes tomorrow, you can um, find out what, we, what direction we're going in now. Um, but it is moving as we were just talking with Neil earlier. These things take a little bit of time, um, and the ultimate outcome was to allow you guys to continue being able to, to live there, um, <coughs> working with Frank, and um, you know that hasn't been going so well. But we have a uh, possible solution uh, to that. And I'm going to share with the board, and then hopefully we can move forward with that. Um, and then we can share that with you and talk to you about that, and mm -hmm. if you wish. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Um, I know the court order is also a part about Frank housing anyone that is displaced because mm -hmm. of his, you know, construction of that road. So I want to make sure that everyone can be housed on, I mean, Frank's expense. Yep, that's um, and that would work with Ron um, to have the court enforce that, um, and we'd be willing to do that certainly. But um, yeah, come back or hang around, and then we can let you know what we're what we're doing. All right, you're welcome. All right. Um, we have a little bit more time. Sorry, I know the greater discussion. This, these things happen. As Mark told you, um, do we have an update uh, on the uh, amphitheater? Is that what you're? Uh, for parking, parking lot, it's been grabbed by John. You can review it. I can talk to you. Whatever you want. All right. Yeah. Why don't, if you have it, why don't you go ahead and, and leave it? We don't have um, time to discuss it tonight. But John and I. It's an aerial map that shows it doubles the parking and solves the school's um, yeah. drainage stuff. Drainage problem. So, great. Can you call me? I'm going to talk. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's a grind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Doug. Doug. All right. All right. If there's nothing else, let me check on this. Whoops. I have someone here I need to let enter here. Everyone keep an eye on that. When there's someone in the waiting room, please let me know. Uh, Mike Brown is trying to get in. All right, uh, Martin and um, Miss Baker. How are you doing tonight, Martin? Okay. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, I'll uh, allow her to introduce herself, but um, go ahead, Gretchen, if you want to. 
Uh, I'm Gretchen Baker. I work for United Construction and Forestry. I'm the salesman in the area for John Deere Construction Products. Okay, so Martin invited you in to share a little bit about uh, yeah, our credit offer to come in, so I I to run on that offer, and so yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Um, Jeff's played. It was kind of short notice. Gretchen stopped in uh, last week, and Sasha contacted me and said, "Maybe we should drink an opportunity for the other sales rep." And I did reach out to him, but it was just short notice, so he wasn't able to make it. Uh, he said he's more than happy to answer any questions via email. Um, so yeah, so Gretchen offer. I took her up on that and. Here we are. Thank you. So, Gretchen, we have a, a, a John Deere grader now. You do? It it's, it's all, only has, what, 8,000 hours on it? 8,500. 8, 8, is, that, um, is that a lot of hours? Once they hit, a, it, once they hit about 9,000 hours, we find the um, trade value declines rapidly on those. Um, you're you're pushing nine thousand hours, and uh, currently my lead time isn't very far out. It's yeah, it's a lot of hours. A lot of towns turn them over, try to turn them over around seven. Seven thousand hours. Yep. yep. Is kind of what I'm finding recently. And how old are those typically at seven thousand hours in a lot of towns? Um, it depends on how many miles of dirt road they're grading and if they're running two graders or not. So if you, for an example, have 80 miles worth of dirt road, that's 160 miles you're grading. Yep. And I'm, I know these guys are out all the time. Yeah, no, we use it, I think, a lot more than most. We have a lot of yeah. dirt yeah, road. I think so. I think a uh, fair amount more than some. Um, I think if you compare us to surrounding towns, uh, Middlesex might be comparable. Possibly Berlin, but the Valley Towns, uh, Duxbury would be similar, but Wakefield, uh, faced in, they have maybe 10 less miles, but they have about 50. So is it usually miles years or miles or just condition that well, they're traded in on? Uh, usually hours. Right. It's an 07, yeah. you said, right? Uh, 07? Sure. 07, yes. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so what? Tell us um, what is new since we've been at this other grader and what would be, you know, what are the... A lot of things have changed. I mean, number one, emissions. Um, emissions laws went into effect in 2014. And I believe emissions laws are changing again. Um, I believe for heavy equipment it'll be like 2027. Um, I personally wouldn't want to be one of the first prototypes getting in 2027. Right. Um, and my understanding is we meet most all of the current emissions that are coming out for 2027. So we're not going to have a whole lot of changes. Um, that's a big difference. The other difference is we uh, do electric over hydraulic, which is very cool. So there's joystick steering or EH controls, which will allow more flexibility within your operators. So if you have Martin here that wants to use this function for one thing and another operator wants to use it for a different thing, and you punch in your, your code and it automatically goes to your settings. Um, there is different slope grades um, that come standard, slope grading that comes standard. So you could, Martin could set his grade and It'll automatically do that within the machine, so you need less operator experience. Um, us, as well as CAT, um, I know they do the same thing because operators are not as experienced as they once were. Um, yeah. I mean, you see a lot more turnover and, and such in mm -hmm. the industry. And so you probably yeah. so uh, kind of what you said, so what Gretchen is saying is uh, doesn't matter who gets the machine if they set the slope to three percent the grader is going to compensate for that three percent and three percent you bet me might be totally different than three percent to you it's a it's an operator variance right the machine takes that variance out of the equation so you get proper crown proper slope water's getting off the road. 
Yeah. Such thing. So they're pretty neat. Um, our machine's not a deaf machine, uh, admissions machine, which I like. I'm not ecstatic to be going to a new machine that's going to use deaf. Um, talk to some mechanics for United, for CAT. Probably 60% of their calls are really deaf related, um, admissions related. Um, just because that, that's across the board for trucks, excavators, uh, graders, loaders. It's just been a complicated system to master. They're getting there, um, but then now we're meeting, we're going to have to meet a new set of emissions. We're going to 27, so I'm confident that all, whatever machine we were purchased is up to date on the, the emissions and depth. It's just kind of a complicated system that's thrown some loops and trucks that we've owned. And Right, and yeah, we would see both the loader and grader were both pre emissions, so we didn't have to worry about that. Now, um, with the graders, or with your John Deere, how many different models do you have? Oh, six, eight. Um, now, when you look at us, what would you say that what category are we in, or would you, I, how do you, how do you come <laughs> up with that? So, we have all of our models come. Uh, you can either have them in four-wheel drive or six-wheel drive. Yeah. Um, I do not push four-wheel drive graders in Vermont. You have ma we have massive hills here. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want a four-wheel drive. You want that six-wheel drive. We have six-wheel now. Yeah. 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 Um, so we would have a six seventy, a six seventy two, a seven seventy, a seven seventy two, an eight seventy, and an eight seventy two. What are the six, seven, and eight? Size wise. Size. Seven, seven, size seven, I mean, seven, when you seven, say seven. size, I mean like. <laughs> Um, with like weight engine, all of it. Um, so your eights are going to be humongous. Um, I I don't think we have a single eight seventy eight seventy two in Vermont. Um, standard is either a six seventy two or a seven seventy two, and given the hills, I would push for the bigger of the two in this area. You go into Richmond and Essex, they all run 672s. Um, out here, pretty much everyone goes with the bigger machine. It just adds the weight. Um, it's able to push that dirt Throw it uphill. uphill, which is important. I mean, yeah. If you take it no, more no, to no, a no. mountain road, you want a big machine for that. Yeah. <laughs> What do we have now, Mark? I think the one before was 772. Uh, yeah. So that's what we found in And so if we're at 8,500 hours by the time, with the lead time, I mean, we're talking, we're going to be over the 9,000 hours. So, I mean, how much of a hit are we going to take on that no, trade? Your trade evaluation is locked in with me okay. right now. And I talked to Martin today. I have had a $40 price increase since we built the grader three weeks ago. So essentially no price increase. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we do with that is, um, is we will send out uh, really the come from Sasha to Martin, but just a <laughs> formal request uh, for that. And then we'll open it up here at whatever our next select like, board meetings. Um, so you guys know, I, John and I spoke earlier in the week. Uh, we're looking at having uh, a vote either the 20th or 27th of June to vote on the purchase. Um, we would, uh, the idea is that we would get something out in a week or so as far as an RFP, get that back uh, on that. I think we meet on the 20th. Is that the day that we meet? Uh, the next our next meeting is what? It's the 15th. 15th of May. No, no, no. Uh, oh, in June. In oh, June. Yes. It, because it was the 20th. Right. Right. So we would have them back by the 20th of June. Uh, so it gives you plenty of time if there's any things you need to change for that. Um, then we could make a decision that night. And then yeah, have um, order it's, uh, uh, have the order approved. Have the right Chris Sasha called me earlier this week saying, you know, we'd send an RFP. Um, the thing with that is, I know what I have for a grader now, but I don't build graders every day. Right? You know, it's, like, it's a complicated process. Yep. Um, 
I'm going to rely on Gretchen, Jeff from Milton Cat. Um, the potential is you're you're leaning heavily on scrupulous, you know, dealers. You you need them to be honest and forthright because Gretchen could cheapen this machine up so that we jump at it. But that's not something I want for 15 years. It needs to be built and built right, and you need to trust the salesman that you're you know you're dealing with. Maybe on purpose. Um, you know, maybe a snow building up a cheap or snow blower, that's one thing. But this is a you know, four hundred thousand dollar machine, it's not that easy to build that RFP and make sure I'm covering all the bases. So I'm a little bit out of my depth with this, you know, and get in it and run it. I know what I think I want, but it'll be require me talking with a lot of people to find out. I mean essentially this machine very similar to the one we have now. There's been upgrades, mostly in the engine department, in the emissions, um, you know, but some creature comforts. Uh, big choice we have to make is driver control. So mm -hmm. uh, the old antler rack style, of, you know, you've got this yeah. antler rack, they call it. Um, notorious for rotator cuffs. Sasha's father had rotator cuff surgery. I'm going to guess it's probably from years of running greater. I run greater for a day and my shoulder's killing me. Like it's, you know, it's a old style. It's a, it's hard. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it would be, but you're constantly moving. The ergonomics uh, is very yeah, exactly. important. So, so we can do styles in both cat and John Deere. Uh, joystick controls, everything's down here now. So we've gone to Berlin, Waitsfield, and Middlesex. I'll have more graders to kind of compare, pick and choose what we think uh, we would like for um, controls. And I think we'll be going with the joystick controls, which is just basically you're, you're literally, you have joysticks in your hand and all the controls are right here. It's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but half a day I'm guessing you'll be so well, the machine's, the machine's going to be smart enough to do it for you. Is that going to also have the program that another person, the way you were mentioning yeah. about? Yes. Yeah, it's just like yes. your kid changing. Yeah, I didn't know. That, 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 was, that was part of it. Oh, yes. Old school. Uh, yeah. you know, hopefully I'll get the other guys in the greater more, and they probably will adapt to it better than I will. But Fine. Is there a warranties? What's the warranty on well, heavy Before we move on, I just want to uh, address the, <laughs> uh, the RFP. So, you know, the, the intent, and I know it's come along fairly quick. Yeah. Uh, not like we had time at the fire truck to, to sit yeah. down and make RFPs, but um, I think general uh, with the size and also, as you mentioned, our your sales consultant so uh, for sharing municipalities. Yeah. What? We do a comprehensive warranty, okay. which is everything that'll be checked on the left hand side. And then it's per for how many hours? Certain number of hours or whatever. Uh, graders are eighty four months, four thousand hours. Okay. So as far as um, putting together a, a price, and, and again, it sounded like you've, you've kind of put one together, and we have seen some numbers. Um, I guess we are relying upon you is to make sure that we're getting a machine that satisfies. That but, I think I want. Right? right, but we're also looking for value, too. Of course. You know, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, what about the shiny thing there? And, or, you know, we don't need that. but. Uh, as he said, something that has the ergonomics, you know, that's up to date. I mean, I can't imagine any of them are not going to do the job. Uh, right. But there's, yeah. we're not looking to, to, to cheap out on anything. We just, you know, we're not looking to, you know, we yeah, just need stuff functional, right. something that we can get another 17 years or whatever yeah. it is. Uh, Heated seats for Mark. You know, you know, just something that's going to do a solid job. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in this together, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I think, and, um, you know, uh, United, Toronto Road Tracks, they've been around a long time. They're not yeah. leaving anytime soon. It's so, so where ready. would it be serviced if you had it, if it broke down? Where is it Willis. serviced? Then or the workshop yeah. with the road. Mm -hmm. All right. 
so Wellston on like the, the corner, is that where? No, we are, do you know where Engineers Construction is? Um, on Wellston Road. Past Home Depot, Walmart. Yes, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, we're directly behind ECI on Office Road. Okay. Okay. No, I know. Sure. What's the uh, lead time, basically? What's, what's five that? months. Five months. Yep, it takes three months to build a road grader. Okay. I am five months out. So I looked it up yesterday. Yesterday I was working. Sunday. Um, and if I were to have ordered that machine yesterday, it would be here for right around Labor Day weekend. So it's really not bad. No, Trucks are out 18 months. And, yeah, yeah. Um, then you said we were going to do a vote when? June 27th or something? Or? June. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either the 20th or 27th. I yeah. Think. We've looked at a couple of different dates. We something, something like that. that. Yeah. But, and then so we would maybe be able to say, you know, release something by July 1st or something. Oh, absolutely. By, yeah. by, by then. And that would be five months. No, that, that would be a town wide vote. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So five more. months from the best base of the order would be maybe basically we have to get through this summer training with what we have. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's with and that that's about as quick as we can do it because it has to be in a yeah, yeah, ten day exactly. window. Yeah. It'll be thirty days. Yeah. yeah. And then ten days within that thirty days or so something yeah. like that. So we checked into that and that's where we came up with those dates, but we may I want to change that, but it'd be the 20th or 27th that we'll have, uh, you know, an answer. And typically, the townspeople, um, or something like this, we're usually pretty, um, I might get lucky. I don't know if I want to say that, but, uh, you know, they see, I mean, we, we need a grader. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's, what, that's reality. Uh, finance, when you met, I'm assuming they're, they made the recommendation to. Pull the trigger on. Yes. Or, yeah, I didn't really hear anything one way or the other. Yes, I did. Now, are you going to need a municipal lease on the machine or um, to just buy it outright? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll finance it. Okay. Um, we offer up to seven year municipal leases with a $1 buyout at the end. Um, and for example, if we ordered it July 1st, um, I would lock in the, the July 1st rate, and then if it comes in, let's say, December, and the December rate is lower, you get the December rate. Uh, okay. And it is seven years fixed? Is it? Seven years fixed. And what is it, what's today's rate? Uh, 6.25. 6.25, right. Well, that was yesterday's or yesterday's. Rate. What? Yeah. It was yesterday's rate because today's May 1st. Okay. And I okay. have not gotten updated by the Yeah, that's probably the same. All right, we've got any other questions for Gretchen? I don't have any other questions. Can we keep this copy? Oh, of course you can. Right. Yeah. So you guys are supposed to look up here and tell me when someone was. No, he's not going to go. Okay. Oh, no. All right. So we're all good with questions. Okay. Gretchen, do you have any more questions yeah. for us? Um, not in, not particularly. Mark knows how to get a hold of me, and you guys all have my cell phone number. Please use that if you have questions. Okay. Um, the store number, I try not to be there. Okay. On the road, huh? Not selling anything <laughs> <laughs> You guys, <laughs> you guys got, you bought out the place across from Agway too, right? Is that you got, you, the, so we're going to be here. We went down to Montpelier, yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Um, we consider that we have 52 parts stores. So if you needed parts ordered in, Martin's going down to Montpelier, you could actually order it in through that store. Direct shipping. Um, not that I necessarily would recommend like one of the green lawnmower guys work on your grader. Um, but, um, <laughs> but to get parts, if you needed parts, he could order it through that store. Okay. He's through there. Oh, very good. Handy. Yeah. That's very handy. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gretchen, for coming out on a rainy night. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, 
kind of nasty out there, so be careful uh, driving home. Thank you for having yep. me. Yeah, very good. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Martin, do you have um, I do a moment? some other stuff to go over, but I don't know if you want to take care of other business. Let me just look at the agenda yeah. here for a moment. Yeah. Um, no, why don't we... Yeah. Yeah. 10 to 6. Okay. 6.35. We're right on schedule. Yeah. Uh, Martin, why don't you... Let's, what, what you have so that we... Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Um, Sam. All oh, right. Um, so I don't know if everybody know is aware that Varens is on a very limited basis this year. Um, I haven't talked to Sue, the owner, personally. Um, she did send me the email before we received it, basically giving the same information. But I would have to assume this is her last year at at lease, but maybe not, maybe things change, I don't know. Um, so when you read her message, um, she's open um, today, possibly, if the notch was open, I didn't check with her, she's open from 12.30 to 4, um, Monday through Thursday. Closed Fridays, so not a big deal. Would be off probably anyway. So I'm like, no, should be closed from June 12th to July 4th. So two weeks, three weeks, I guess. Closed. Um, so we had that sand quote from Donahue, Stephen Donahue, that uh, I certainly didn't feel it was fair to lock him into that. He wasn't aware of this situation. I don't think anybody was until she sent that email. Um, so he was bidding on the um, knowledge that she's going to be open regular hours. Right. So, so I've talked with him and talked with his mother, who I think does the billing and everything. And she said, yeah, definitely with those hours and stuff, there's no way they could even get the job done. You know, you're talking best case scenario, three loads a day. And then you're down a month in the middle. And like three loads a day means the truck has to be sitting there at 12 o'clock. Right. So and that's just, it's not doable. It's not, you can't get one truck, 4,000 yards. Possibly a fleet of them could get it done, but uh, the bigger companies were obviously much higher than him. And I'm assuming if they knew of the situation, they wouldn't be interested in that quote anyway. So, um, well, I guess the long and short of it is I'm kind of looking. So, so what, did they give you any indication of what they would do? Varen Donahue's? Yeah, Donahue. Um, so here's the thing. So Varen's also went up $2 a yard in sand. That puts them at um, I think $12 a yard. Works out to $168 a 14-yard load. Northeast makes a half inch manufactured winter sand that after some haggling I got um, them down to 875 a ton. There's like a 1.3 conversion rate. So that works out to about $175 a 14 yard load. As opposed to what was it? 168. Seven dollars difference okay. for four thousand yards that works out to just make basically two thousand dollars on the money. Yeah. Or that material. Um, I like the idea of putting a manufactured sand. It's ba it basically half inch plant bags that would be putting down on our roads. Since for right now we purchase three quarter inch plant bags to top coat our roads. So you're not contaminating your roads with sand yeah. and aggregate. The downside is we don't know how this stuff is going to store. There are towns using it, Berlin uses it, uh, loves it, claim they love it. My concern is freezing, because it's very dense, very, very dense. Um, and I think Stefan will have issues with it in the smaller body sander. Um, it's poly, so that's a plus, but I think it'll be an issue um, with that. And then the other, so freezing's the issue. The other issue being it's a half inch 
uh, manufacturing, so half inch stone. We'll get three quarter inch stone from Varens. So if there's an ice storm, it's those three quarter inch pebbles that keep us on the road, <laughs> yeah, yeah. basically. Um, so if you get half an inch of ice, you're you're done. You know, right? it, yeah, over, you exactly. Know. So um, I love the idea of the manufactured sand. I do they um concerned with and maybe um, tell you know this. Do they have problems with it freezing over in Berlin? I mean, have you heard that complaint? I haven't heard uh, it since I thought, outside. Yeah, to the road for him, and he claims. Do they put no. any salt on it or anything like that? No. Run it straight. And I think it's very similar to uh, once you get to the center, if it's not frozen, it's not frozen, right? right? I think yeah. there'd just be, my concern is going to be a little mm-hmm. thicker crust. And then once you get through, um, it's not that, I mean, most of our winter weather is 30 degrees and pl- over now anyways, but if you get a right. minus 10 degree day, it's going to stick to everything, I believe. But um, I'm pretty much ready to ask if the board is going to put out the truck and quilt again. We switch it to northeast, which is about the same haul as Varen's time-wise. Um, and see what we get back for quotes of. You should, um, Lord, what's the word thing is if you just reach out to um, Donahue yes. first and say, look, this is what we're going to do. That's why I wanted to add. Like, you know, it's basically the same mileage yeah, or time. Do that that with the, yeah, you know, no, I mean, we're no, he's the same. working on it. You know. right. He's from, he's from uh, Washington, I think. Right there. Yeah, so, so it might yeah. be better for them. Yeah, so I mean, it so might be benefit them to do it. Right. Um, and I did tell her that we may possibly be resubmitting the quote, so I would keep her updated. But I think you should just go and check and see, see what they'll do. It. See, see what they'll give us for a yeah. trucking quote. And yeah, see if they'll, if yeah. they'll keep the same quote. Yeah. <laughs> so we can sign it and just yeah. tell her right there we're and done. Just done. Switch. And then my thought is we would fill in with Varen Sand to we have what I think is approximately 800 to 1,000 yards down there now. We would probably stockpile that in one corner um, and open that up in case we got a freezing ice storm or something. We could use it. Stefan could probably use it in his sander all year long when he's putting out three yards at a time, nothing major. And then uh, we'll see what Sue and Varens ends up doing. But maybe we love the stuff and we just go with that anyway. I don't right. Know. No, I think it's, we don't have a lot of choice. So. Yeah. We don't. I don't believe we do. I think we've got to, I mean, I, like I said, I have not personally talked to Sue, but I think the writing is on the wall. She's open for six towns. <laughs> right. You know, and that's it. So, yeah. No, I, I think, think she's that's... doing it as a favor. To the six towns, but in reality, not much of a favor to us. It's just right. They're doing what they can do to make it correct to, mm-hmm. yeah, to close gracefully. So, uh, so there's that. All right. So, um, river road paving. Uh, put up that notice. They are they're doubtful they're going to pave this week. I haven't heard it from anybody today. I see the equipment's there, but they drop something off. So. Yeah, but I mean, they couldn't need decent weather to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, parking lot out here. I know we're doing the storm water. Um, Stefan seemed to be think that we were digging up the parking lot as well. Uh, is that anything that? Is happening this summer. Yeah, is happening this summer. Yeah, we are digging the town crews digging up the parking lot. I don't know if the town crew is doing it as well. Yeah, town, town, yeah. That's that's. I know you was, and Ray were working on that. Yeah, that was that was the. the I know we talked about it one time, and I said it was a possibility, but a no follow up. It's not on my summer plans. It's not on your summer plan. Not at all. <laughs> Concerns are, I guess, like, what are the plans? Uh, digging up the pavement and yeah. three, are we going four feet, two feet, six feet? Yeah, I, um, I, I, I thought that Bray had been 
pretty much talking with you about that. No, Stephen brought it to my attention. Okay. I said we did discuss it one time as a select board. I remember discussing that. If it came to that, we could do the digging, but I had nothing on my radar for this summer. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. I just, the logistics of that parking lot getting dug up, and, and was the intention to pave it? No. No. So why? <laughs> Pay, uh, mainly because of the clay. To get, get, rid, get rid of, of that clay. But if we don't pave it, we're not going to. Well, we're going to pave it eventually. eventually. Okay. Um, See, the you know, bottom line, that so much time has gone on yeah, since, yeah. since we got the ramp. Right, right. They have to I mean, there's just no way. It's, so the way I understood it was, and I think I was under the impression, as was everybody else, that grant was for stormwater and parking lot, correct? Like we all were under the impression that three hundred and some odd thousand dollars was covering it all, and then it came to our attention that it was just stormwater, and then we were looking for ways to kind of finish the parking lot, get it done. And I think that's when the discussion of the town crew digging it up came, yeah. you know, to a forefront. But right. no follow up to me, um, which. It's a little concerning well, look, since we're May first, and I have more work that I will get done somewhere right. already planned. For right. And this is time sensitive. I mean, we basically have to be in here as soon as the school closed, um, and then I don't know. If, I'm, I'm sure, like John, I'm sure you're aware of the amount of um, buried utilities. Buried water lines. Buried, I mean, we had an old town clerk's office over here that had power buried to it, water buried to it. Um, we have water lines buried to the fields out here. We have light poles with stuff buried. We have a well in the middle of the parking lot. Like Eugene Granfield has a water line. I'm sure he's probably not the only one in the village with a water well, line. Sure line. Sure water lines right. So. That's and, uh, and, and just mentioned the school's trying to deal with a drainage issue by that corner or something. That's why he's. That's being that dealt with the drainage. That's what? all. That's all being dealt with with the drainage. That's yeah. what. Oh, that was yeah. all the drainage project is. Okay. Yeah, I. Do. It's a big uh, job. Uh, it, it is a very big job. Not that we can't get it done, but we won't be getting our other projects done. If we, we talk about, it. like, is there a design plan, or is it just we're going to dig up two feet, or? No, I mean, as far as I, is, is the architectural plans and everything. Right? And there it, is plans yeah. to, oh, yeah. to this, yeah. okay. I mean, actually, it's, it's the second round. Second round. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was part of the stormwater with the uh, sediment pond and all of that, and I don't disagree that it needs to be done. I'm just um, like, is the island going? So all the trees and the island? No. Are going? No. 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 Okay. So. so. Um, well, I think that's right. We can try and get Ray on the phone if you like. Yeah. Well, I don't think we need them tonight, but we need to. Well, is there a site drawing, an actual site drawing, John? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a $350,000 project. It's yeah. well engineered. It's not. Right, but uh, does that include <clears throat> the parking lot as well or just the stormwater? Because that's why I think we've, we're all kind of aghast that it was that much money just for the stormwater. So are we just kind of winging the park? No, I, I, no, no, I mean, I don't want to put it like that, but we're, you know, we're not. I mean, it's like something that, that I haven't been working on the project, I but I, I do know, listening to what has gone around and what Ray was, that they were, it's it's a fairly, a fairly sophisticated project. Oh, it, it, it is. It's extensive. It, and, and so let's, so we're not speculating what it is or what it's not and what it includes and what it doesn't. 
let's get Ray, um, and Ray's contacted me in the last couple of days on another issue, so I know he's available. I'll contact him and we'll get everyone together and figure yeah. out yeah. what it is and if it's yeah, something that we can do or yeah. not, or whether yeah. it needs to be done at a different time. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah. So the 2018 <laughs> International. Um, originally um, had gas here last summer. Yep. We waited on it for five months, got it back, plowed for half the winter, started going through coolant again, hauling for mud season. Uh, Sean had to pull over it with um, using antifreeze. So got it up to Clark's EGR cooler, got it back, ran it for about six hours. Same issue, got it back towed to Clark's. Um, I questioned them at that point whether it was indeed the EGR cooler when they told me that the head was left. So they put a new head on after I was, I went a belligerent. I was just like, listen, I'm not happy. I'm not going to haul on the screen, but you know, you tell me the EGR cooler is gone. Six hours later, the head's bad. I'm thinking the head was bad all along. The EGR, no, no, I had water. They changed the head, took it for a road test up there at Allegiant, got it back, still combustion gases. They changed the EGR cooler again, took it for another test drive, got it back. Now they're saying the head's bad. What? I, I don't know what to do. Like I, the head's bad again? Supposedly, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, and I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a, people I've talked to, like, he's stated, he said, he thinks the head could possibly be warped, the block could be warped, and the tolerances are too much. Uh, so, and part of this was, they weren't even working on the truck, it was just sitting up there, where they were trying to figure out who was going to pay for all this. Right. So I called the Navistar rep and said, listen, I, it doesn't matter who's going to pay for it at this point, we need the truck. You know, unless you're going to lemon it and give us a new truck, the truck has to be repaired. The only other option would be another Allegiance shop in Colchester. So fix the truck and we'll argue about who's going to pay for it after the fact. Well, they you know, want to do a top contact and that was their rep. He was very good. All of a sudden, things were warrantied and it was going to be paid for by 100% by Allegiance. So. I don't know where it is now, but frustration doesn't even begin to... And will we have it back with them? <laughs> will we be without it for another summer, <laughs> right? Like, they have all the parts they claim to fix it, but is he going to get it back and run it for two days and, you know, it goes on the hook again? It's just going to go like that. There's going to be something else causing whether the, the bottom part of the I'm engine is... Exactly. Like, you know, they should, at this point, drop a whole new motor into it, in my opinion, but... Yeah. I'll have that discussion with the Navistar rep, found that out today, because supposedly we're going to be able to pick it up on Friday. We called, nobody returned our calls. So I called today, nobody returned my calls, called again, called again, mm -hmm. finally got somebody, obviously nobody wanted to talk to me. Um, and they said, yeah, this is what's going on. It's like, well, at the very least, you should have picked up the phone and called, because you said it was going to be done Friday. So. I just, hmm. so I'll talk to you. Put the, head, the new gasket on the third time yet? Uh, yeah, they're in the, they say they have the parts and they're changing the head once again. Well, they'll do it again because it's not. Well, of course, yeah, I mean, I've got to believe something yes, else as well. well. So it comes down, it's either crank or something. It's either parts, defective parts, but you wouldn't expect multiples but possibly uh, technician error which is possible who knows um, or just there's so, something else leading to these family like they are quickly like very quickly after their so we're putting a lot of pressure on the yeah head, so exactly the, so you yeah. didn't mind the thing sat apart for four months at allegiance in the middle of the summer, so I don't know what that would do to the motor. They claim nothing, but they, they literally had to rebuild the motor because 
things started to rust, even though they right. treated it and fluid filmed it. And, yeah. So. All right, well, it's frustrating, so, but at least yeah, very frustrating. Um, it sounds like they kind of acknowledge it's under warranty, so I guess they, that's they did. Plus, I mean, uh, the know. last I was told, yes, they were going to warranty this, but still doesn't help me when I'm trying to truck work back. on exactly yeah. with three trucks, and we're down to two. One that I'd really rather not drive a lot if we don't have to. My, you know, the 15 years, because yeah, we're um, and that. that comes up to my last thing. The, so I have to. Basically, I have to buy a new set of tires, um, summer tires, for my tires are not going to pass inspection, uh, and we're going to have it longer than the inspections in August, I believe, and it's uh, not going to pass inspection with the summer tires, that, the original summer tires that came on it. So we put um, Sean's summer tires on my truck. To run out and with the plan of buying new tires to put on Sean's truck to we assume yeah. it'll have miles on it at some point um, and then they will either the summer tires in good shape will take out and, and put winters to send with it or we'll send it with the summers that are basically wore out so uh, that's about 5600 bucks I think right now the quote I have been looking around but Pretty much the How much 56? 56 for eight. Eight, oh, eight, eight, eight tires. Yeah. yeah. Well, tires have gone up. Even regular oh, tires God. have I gone know. up. I bought a snowmobile tire the other. I uh, not a snowmobile, but an ATV yeah. tire the other day, and they wanted like two, three hundred dollars. So, some ridiculous. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with that. But I don't know. We're well. I think, I think we're going good. We obviously doing fantastic with mud season there for the longest time. You know. 380 during days did kind of raise a little havoc, but we went through half of what I had stored for an inch and a half stone, so that's better than usual. Yeah. Um, but uh, we were down Sean's truck and we were down Rodney's truck. Um, his truck had a valve failure in the hydraulic system. He couldn't raise his dump body, so we were down to the workhorse, which is the 015. <laughs> And it, you know, and I didn't dare take a chance, so I hired um, a more time runner, Nick Pizzali, to haul for a day, two days, um, to just make sure we had plenty of stone, not knowing where we were going to go. We were kind of chasing our tail with just one truck. But um, yeah, other than that, never we're a dull moment. Yeah, what's that? I said never a dull moment. No, doesn't seem to be. I get my bucket list done, and then it just comes back in. So um, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, planned on maybe starting to dig as early as next week if the weather looks like it is. We'll be jumping around a little bit to take care of some ditching, uh, culvert issues, uh, stuff like that for a little bit. But then we have our bigger projects that we'll get on as the summer progresses. One of them being that the big culvert on the common. Um, I don't think we've heard if we've got the Better Back Roads grant, but I think it looked good. Um, yeah, I think Sherwin said we'll just call me. Um, and so that would be a, a road closure on the common road. Obviously, we need to warn it, close the road down for probably a week, I'm guessing. We're going to have to uh, step ourselves down into that to be safe because it is so deep. Um, but. So but we yeah, we have some big projects planned. Um so we'll just the ones you didn't have planned. <laughs> um quick question for you, and I know you got an email from me and I was asking about um Cobb Hill, uh, Mike Brigano and, yes. and the work he did over yeah. there. Uh, as you guys all remember last year there was work done on Cobb Hill, Mike did permit. Uh, there were some um, requirements that Ray had worked together with them Correct. to make sure it was was done. Um, they uh, stopped the work prior to finishing the work. The permit expired uh, probably a month ago. Um, either way, they wanted to um, see if we would uh, give them uh, an extension on the permit. So I had Martin go up to check to make sure all things were done and it looked like they had I, I, the work looks really good. I think there's some uh, 
cleanup that needs to happen on the edges and trees that were just kind of moved out of the way with the root balls and stuff. But the road base is uh, excellent, very dry, very uh, well, took care of a lot of drainage issues leading up to the beaver ponds where they stopped. That's where they stopped their work. And there's water coming down the road. Um, there was a tree across, so I didn't go up. I mean, I literally could see the beaver ponds and that's where the work ends. Um, so there is a teeny bit of erosion happening there, but uh, having walked the property before any work was done, there was a lot of erosion happening there already. So I think it's, you know, they can get up there and address that, that would be great. But if not, if I don't believe it's related to anything they did. I mean, it's just it's the benefits way. anyways. We'll exactly. Finish the the landscape of the road. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, extend that permit though. He's on the, it looks like Mike, yeah. he's on the Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, um, did you have any questions? No, no questions. Uh, yeah, I think, like I said, Martin saw what the work that we did. And, yeah, we, we got a, a lot of the erosion controlled, but uh, I think we still have a little bit more ways to go to improve the infrastructure. And uh, yeah, looking forward to moving forward. So I appreciate your guys' support. All right, thank you. We'll uh, sign off on that. It'll be, it'll be in the office here. Cool, thanks a lot. Um, all right, so that's that's it. I just want to make sure you were. I want to get your feedback yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so why don't um, now we will go ahead uh, and um, go into executive session. We've got Dick here has been patiently waiting. Um, Nicole, thank you, Martin. Uh, Nicole just came online. Um, Nicole, we're just getting to move to executive session now. So if you want to jump back on and. Um, minutes um, you're welcome to so I make a mo or John why don't you go ahead and make a motion I'll uh, make a motion that uh, we go into executive session um, under section uh, 313 number one I'm sorry 313 a number one where we have found that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or person involved a substantial disadvantage and that is for f confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body all right so and to add to that um all right let's get a second on that if we could second. okay thank you um more discussion uh that's um the reason, thank you, John, but um, the purpose we're going in to talk about the Frank Piazza situation. So that that's out there. And I would invite our um, Dick Valentinetti, our health officer, uh, to come with us into executive session as well. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> no. All right. So uh, we're just executive session where uh, it was the full board plus Dick Valentinetti, our health officer, and we also had our attorney Ron Shems on the telephone, and we will be having some action. John? So I'd like to uh, make a motion that uh, we move forward to seek receivership for financial uh, Financial discovery. To discover, yeah, financial discovery uh, in the uh, Frank Piazza case. Second on the motion. Seconded by Robin. Any um, further discussion on it? All right, all in favor vote aye. 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 No opposed. All right, so um, Ron will be sending a letter to um, uh, Frank's attorney tomorrow or contacting him and letting him know that we are seeking receivership and that Ron will be um, doing a financial discovery uh, as well to make sure that there's some uh, funds to pay for this. But um, it, the process is not um, gonna happen overnight, but it will, uh, Ron said it will be as diligent as possible, but it will probably be um, about six to eight weeks before we can find someone to appoint uh, as a receiver. So if there are no questions, we'll go ahead to the agenda. Dick, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dick. Thanks, Dick. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so we had ARPA funds discussion. 
we had um, that schedule. So let's go ahead and look at that. Um, so, sorry. I guess I'm just. I know it was, uh, I wasn't here, but I was a little surprised that we went ahead and. Um, distributed more ARPA funds at our last meeting as we had decided um, we talked about getting together with the um, financial committee to find out really kind of what we had and what we were doing with it. Um, so Don you made a motion to um, uh, for, was it 35,000? Yes. What was that for? That we can go ahead. Sorry. No, see. Can I continue on with uh, the next phase of design um, from the town hall, so that we could be ready for the the all the you know the grant process in uh, in the fall. The big library, the sixteen and twenty five million dollar grant funds. So, so you know, so that would be you know we could you know keep the momentum going and get that design done because when we were informed by that you know the state and their grant thing that the more ready a town towns will be with their projects they're more <clears throat> apt to get the fund the funds so what yeah, was the um there's money set aside for the lift for the yeah. five thousand we were taking yeah. thirty five thousand out of that from the lift money fund, from yeah. the lift yeah. money <laughs> which is in the thing is designated as town hall Right, no, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, is, are we going to still need a lift, or is that? Yeah, not, uh, yeah but then that can be funded and get in the, the grants. Grant. But I, actually, that when I went back and looked at stuff, that was the recommendation from the ARPA committee. Yeah, that I was, saw but, that. But yeah. that was never something that, that we took, decided on. It was just a recommendation from them. To use and it, it was as a for lift the town or? hall project. Right. And they had in parentheses the lift. Right. Yeah, um, looking at that piece of paper right here. We hadn't, we hadn't decided on that. Right. Um, that, that's what we decided and, on. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then looking at these other expenses, I mean, the problem is we did an RFP for that first phase. They've got three more phases, no, four more phases down here. And, you know, we're looking at... So what are we supposed to do? Put that up for an RFP every single time? No, we don't have to. In our RFP, we have two things. We have in our uh, purchasing policy, and we also had in the original RFP that we would have the um, this, this right here. I got to put my glasses on. Right. Yeah. And we don't. We can continue on with the same firm. And where, where in our purchasing policy does that That's on, address that? It's right there. Sherilyn couldn't uh, find that. I know. Well, I did, went over and spent all last week with her working on it, and that's right here. Uh, right there. Recurring purchases. This was adopted in 2019, purchasing policy, signed by all you guys. And so it goes, a recurring purchase is the total value of a recurring purchase of a good or service is anticipated to exceed 5,000 during any fiscal year. The bid process shall be utilized and shall specify the recurring nature of the purchase. Once a bid has been accepted, all future purchases shall be made from that bidder without necessary, the necessary additional bids until such time as the select board votes to initiate a new bid process. So we had that, and then in our RFP we also put um, that using that de design professionals for both schematic design and implementation of phases. Right. So that was in, that's what went out to six bidders. Correct, right, right. So, that's what we did for that. But, uh, what I but again, yes, we, we, the funds, um, you know, it's, 
there's a lot. I know there's a tremendous amount of demand for the funds, but this is a, a tremendous project for the town, you know, and it's it's. It'll is the is the second phase? Is it thirty five thousand or is it twenty two thousand? It was twenty two, but we just carried it as an allowance because there's a three thousand dollar potential of a three thousand dollar survey that's in there, and also if we went the route of a construction manager. It's this phase rather than, you know, there's two ways to approach this, get final design drawings and then put it all out to bid. Or <clears throat> do this command, this next design phase, also have a construction manager that you'd pay $5,000, you know, per, potentially, who would help develop a lot of the, some of the build out and the design build phases, you know, the, thus ending, you know, cutting back on some of the architectural stuff. And you'd be more shovel, you know, you'd be able to get a, other contractors online if you went that route, other than the full, you know, bidding. The, it's written up in the, you know, I can show you that in the, oh, I don't know if I brought that with me today. Can I look at your copy for now? But anyways, um, The bottom line is yes, the next set of drawings would be, they're, they're 22 and potentially 3,000 for some uh, uh, an official site survey, which I don't, I'm not quite convinced we need. And then, like I said, if we did the construction manager thing, or we just stay with hard contract documents and we'll have something that we can put out to bid. I'm just trying to find this line in here. For this, let's carry on. What, what do you, I mean, I, you know? I, I mean, I certainly would have felt more comfortable if we had had the money in the budget for the ninety-nine thousand for VIA. I'm sorry. What? Well, the, the whole project, their their part is ninety-nine thousand. I mean, we we never had a townwide vote or anything for that. No, I know, but we don't have to, we're not going, we're not, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going at that whole, that stage yet. When we get to, when we are going to end up having a vote, but we're also going to end up funding this project with grants. So there'll be, there'll be a little of both. Well, you know, there'll be yeah. both of those scenarios. Th that's you know? true, but generally speaking, any time we, any time we have a vote for a project or a piece of equipment, you know, we always talk about arranged financing, which in many cases includes grants. Um, and so, I mean, I... We just happened, this, this you know, the opera funds was, was a way for us it, to be able to do this project. That's what, what it came down to. You know, we, we haven't gone, you know, yes, there'll be a stage where we end up having a vote to build the project and expend the money to spend $800,000 or whatever with 40, 400000 of it in grants and another 200000 in another grant or whatever. You know, I don't know what those numbers will be. And some of that will end up having the rest of the architect's costs. Yeah, and I wouldn't, the, I, wouldn't have a problem, I wouldn't have a problem if, in fact, we had decided for that 90000 And that's the impression that I was under when the last meeting is that the, the 90,000 was. But then when Sherilyn and Tom and I went over the numbers, there was no 90,000 there. And as a matter of fact, if we put it in there, we're, we're, we're done, we're over our funds. You well, know, with we, the 200,000 from the, 200,000 for the fire truck. Well, we had the 90,000. We've already overspent our upper funds. We had the 90,000 <laughs> in there at one point for the for a lift, so there was 90,000 put away for the town hall. 
And that's what we said the other night was we'd utilize some of those funds for this, for this next phase so that we could keep going. Yeah, that was yours. Okay. Um, and, but, and, you know, that was important. my understanding of the yeah. discussion. Is we yeah. did have ninety-four thousand put away for the specifically right. for town hall right. renovation, including the lift. We decided we would try to divert that thirty-five thousand dollars because if we don't renovate the town hall, then we don't get to we're not going to have stage. a lift anyway. Right. Uh, so we can re-vote on that now that we have a full board. If you want to go against that. Um, but that was the discussion is we would not be able to continue moving ahead with the grant process in order to refund in order to fund the rest of the renovation without coughing up that thirty five thousand dollars or that that alone I, I thought thirty five thousand dollars was going to pay for everything to get us to the grant process that's what I voted for last week and, and what has come up um not, so Cheryl not payment or anything you know. shared with us or uh, um, that there's another grant opportunity available for um, town halls. Uh, or is it, it's a half a million dollars? Yeah, it's Mer Mer yeah, yeah, I, was, I did that minutes. webinar. Right. We're applying for that grant. It's $4,000 you get for them to come and do a study. Right, she's, so she's doing that. that. Right. Yep, I mean, I, I have the notes from that, from sitting in so on that. So that's happening um, in, at our next meeting, someone from, um, the state is coming to, to present to us. Okay. So I'm wondering, is there overlap there on what these two, that what's happening as far as with this 4,000, they're going to come in and... They're gonna, the 4,000 pays for them to come and do a study of the building. Right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an energy, energy efficiency, efficiency study. We yeah. had an efficiency Vermont did a walkthrough, but this is way more, you know, in, into the weeds, you yeah. know. And so, but what this, what that grant is mainly going to be for is insulation, um, heating systems, improving right. your heating systems or your cooling systems, and, and, you know, lighting and such like that. So the crossover could be in the lighting. Um, our heating system is relatively new, though we could do some, you know, depending on how far down, you know, we go in this revitalization of the building whether we add any cooling because it would be good to have you know i don't want to get way into the weeds here but you could put cooling in the building for the uh for the possibility that you know there's some huge heat thing and you have people can go there and get cool but that's you know anyways that's getting too into, into the details but that's what i understand the the Mer merper funds are, are mainly for energy efficient upgrades in your building. So yes, we'll be definitely wanting to utilize them, but we have other things that we'll hopefully be getting through the library grant funds, which is accessibility, life safety, the lift, you know, um, you know, and some of the work we need to do in the lower level, right? The water mitigation and such. So, I don't know. So how do we um, how do we? I mean, we, we you allocated thirty five, but again, it's it's twenty two. And I know you said there's three thousand of this and four thousand. We just that. did that as like for an allowance purpose, just as a place setter, you know, with with not the hope of going, you know, of going beyond that, you know. Because I mean, in the first there was a two thousand um, dollar difference between the first. Um, quotes and then what we were built. There was a difference of two thousand um, uh, dollars. Oh, that was the first, the right. first stage. We were right. quoted twenty two nine zero two, and it is uh, twenty four eight fifty one. And so there were no change orders. There were no, you know. No, so I don't know. I, I, I can brief. That's the. I, I didn't. Let me get into this. I don't know. I thought I thought we did talk about that last meeting. No, I, no. I don't even know. Okay. Talking about it. So my my point is, I just don't. If we've got, if we're looking at it's twenty two thousand, I'm comfortable in saying, all right, here's your twenty two thousand. But I hate to just throw a pot of money out there because it, it always is used, whether it's 
Oh no, I understand. Well, I'm you know, not telling them that we have. And then that. we just pull it down and we make those decisions, and, and it's something we all need to to discuss. Um, and so, uh, you know, I just, you know. Well, the way it was phrased last week was not, I mean, our last meeting was essentially it was either we commit these funds or we might as well just kiss the entire library grant goodbye. I think that was the kind of yeah, context that I mean, we, we, we right. just, the but project, that's not we the just, case. That I don't I, know where we know. go with the project from, from this step on if we don't do this next step of design. You know, what, what do we, that's it. What do we do? When you say that, that's it, when, I thought the library grants were in the fall. Yeah, that's when we can apply for them, right. Well, so why is it, if, if we don't... Yeah, because so, so we want to apply for them when we have the next set of drawings done right. with cost, you know, with some okay. costing on them, and then, you know, and then you apply for these grants saying we're going to do this, we're going to do this, this is what we're building, here's the drawings, and, you know, and then they either approve it or they don't. Hopefully we do. I'm sure there's, there's going to be lots of, there's competition in all of these things, for sure, you know? I mean, I would feel most comfortable if, if we could make sure that the minutes show that that 94,000 is going to be our funds. Now, if, if we go back and get grant funding later, the grant funding can replace that. But mm -hmm. I think we have to have somewhere down where that shows that it's not just a recommendation from the ARPA committee, but that we have it down, oh. just like we have what we've spent already. Well, we got in that paperwork from ARPA was just a, the recommendation of that. Right. Oh, I was assuming that was a done deal no, and that money no. was sitting in the bank account somewhere. No. Well, it is in a bank account. Well, whatever. I'm, I was assuming it, the we had already allocated that money and we were going to convert it for a different person's purpose. And, and so. Sherilyn says that the current ARPA fund balance in the bank is 386287 Now, what I don't know, and, and that's not including the 200000 for the fire truck and the 35000 for the town hall. So why so don't we you, have that in front of us? No, what does that include? Because we should have a list. If, I mean, if we're looking at this stuff, no, no, we should have a list we in should. front of us of what we have, what's spent, and what's not. Well, we I should see, all have it. We've, we've, we've had some different lists. I, I know that. Um, I and if it gets it. updated, we should get an updated copy of it so we know what we have and what we don't have when we're pulling it out and looking at this stuff. Well, I, I know, and that's why I think Kelly and I have been asking for that, right? And so let's, we have a meeting, because we could, we had people from uh, town meeting to, to such asking for money, and it's like, hold, oh, until we have a reconciliation of what those funds are, mm -hmm. I really don't want, I can't speak to it, because I didn't know, we didn't know what it was. Right, and okay. we should all have it in front of us. If, we're, if it's looking in there, we all need to have it in front of us at a meeting if we're going to be talking about it. So that we all know. Well, so we have it, we don't. <laughs> right, no, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We all around the table need to have it. Yeah, and I mean, that's why I, that's what I, I think I mentioned before we were making any kind of decisions on it. Let's see what we have. I mean, I said in January we right. needed to have a monthly trial balance and balance sheet so we know what the budget looks like every month, and I still haven't seen one. And for most audits, we should be having them quarterly. I think we have them. Yeah, because we should be getting them at least quarterly, if not monthly. I probably can get them any time you ask, but... No, uh, we should be getting them quarterly. <laughs> I was going to say minimum of quarterly. Sasha, you, you have a pretty basis. good handle on it, right? Um, on the ARPA? There were things that I wasn't even aware of. There was things that Sharon remembers, and I think I had things on my list, too, that she didn't know about because she wasn't involved with any of the stuff. All right, because, I mean, the, the... The last thing I had was dated October 13th or something, 22. Well, I don't think much has changed since that. Since then. I, I guess not. I don't know.
Because even if you, I mean, if you even if you take the two hundred thousand from the three eighty six, oh, we had some That leaves us one hundred eighty six thousand. Is what has been? I mean, does anyone have their most current? We had fifty thousand that went to um, CV fiber. CV fiber, yeah. And actually. <coughs> Uh, the deficit, right? The 2022 deficit? Right. So that's 45. <coughs> River Road paving. I think the river road paving, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> well, we had the first round of the architect, that was 24 or something. So if the balance is 386, <coughs> what's been paid out of that? What hasn't? CV fiber, Vermont integrated, the owl. What was the owl? <coughs> was it much, was it? It was a report that she had given us. Was yeah. What about the, the west sidewalk? I don't think anything was paid it's, on that. No. So that's our, that was our foot, right? No? Okay. Well, we were going to, I thought, neck of the woods was supposed to, was, is that, did that come out of a different? The article actually didn't say The article didn't that. say yeah, that. I know. And I, I know. thought, I thought way back when we decided that none of these were going to get ARBA funds. We were going to put them in as articles. Okay, we did. <clears throat> Which is what we did. <clears throat> we were going to do something with the fire truck. There wasn't anything. Um, well, nothing. We haven't done that yet. No, but I know. But, oh, yeah. you're saying what we've spent. R okay. Right. Sorry. But, the, but that, that looks about right. That's. Uh, 57, 17, 152. And the problem is we have about one point um, uh, 265 million of expenses coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a deficit last year of 45,000. Uh, the River Road project of 33. Uh, West Side Walk project of 83. The North Moortown sidewalk scoping schedule, 10K. Waterbury Inlets, 4K. Fire truck four hundred thirty thousand. Greater three eighty five. Which I don't know if that's in the budget. I mean, in the ballpark, was it four hundred? I thought it was more than three eighty five, but maybe not. Uh, Two hundred seventy five for a truck and ten get uh, ten k of scooter gear for the fire department. And we have three hundred and eighty six thousand twenty seven of the ARPA funds. Um, so that's why I, any little dollar that's going out, I question on the I air. totally and, hear you. I know. And, I said and, that lot when we were here two weeks um, ago. I said that. The other thing we have for money is we have the uh, uh, savings reserve fund. Um, and, you know, 
went back or had Cheryl in or Cheryl in was able to um, get me the policy on that. And so that, the saving reserve was put in place to help lower the tax rate. Um, so, you know, I think this is a year that we may want to consider using some of that money. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the total expenses, um, thank God, I don't think we're going to have the, it's not all coming this year. I mean, the 430, the 385, and the 275, those are the, the, the vehicles, the, the fire truck, the greater, and the highway uh, truck. That are months out. So, right, that's next year. Uh, the fire truck a couple of years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the good news, <laughs> if there is good news of this. But, um, so we just, uh, on all those things, we're going to make sure that we're, we're coming to the, the board and we're, we're making the best decision possible, making sure we're not um, duplicate spending. Um, and for the library project, I think you all know, Don, Callie, I uh, support it very much oh, yeah, more no, than anyone, yeah. probably as much. But I just don't want to make sure that, you know, that something that we can possibly get through the state is not going to be you know, duplicated by this, this firm. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got to be careful of, you know, those, you know, watching our RFPs and, you know, what they're doing as opposed to what um, is available. And, and I know neither of us or none of us, pardon me, know what that is until their next meeting when the state, when she comes in and presents, and then we'll have a bit of, better idea of you know, what Don shares. And so it sounds like it might just be just electrical and heating and, uh, uh, energy efficiency and things yeah. like that. But, well, you insulation know. for the uh, crawl space. Right. So there may be. Yeah, no. that's, that's a big project. Well, right. I, yeah, I mean, once again, I was under the assumption that that money had already been diverted or was already, you know, allocated for the town hall when I voted to divert it. The fact that it isn't, and that we're actually spending funds that haven't been approved yet, I mean, that certainly can change things. Do we want to bring up a discussion? Do we want to spend th that 35000 on well, the continuing with the town hall thing? Or do we just say no, you know, and, and then try to do the grants with, with what we already have? I mean, it, it's going to be a competitive process, so... Well, the, the, you the, know. the problem is that the VIA still needs to move ahead, right? So, I mean, and... Yeah. And, you know, we spent the 24000 well, there's still another 70000 that they're, they're looking at just to bring us up to the construction phase. No, that's through the so, whole project. That's through the very. That's end. through the whole project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Last yeah. meeting. That, that yeah. was the entire. Okay. That is what they that's need the to get the project, entire project, project, including all the management, the final punch list, all you know, you exactly. know, the drawings, the management, the job meetings, all okay. that. Okay. All right. And at that point, we would have an idea of what type of grants we would have. We would get. So yeah. That we right. Can, we can pay for that process. The next phase of their work will give us the. What the final design can be, what it's going to cost, and what and we can put out there for the grants to see what they're going to, what we can get to pay for it. So, can we go ahead? Would you mind amending your your motion to be the the second phase price of the twenty two thousand? And if you need the stuff, just come back. I mean, we're not going to say no to you, but that way we have. Exactly. Sure. If, then if we need to get the, the survey or we need to do some other thing, we'll come back. Sure. Right. And that way the money's, so that way it's just not kind of handed out, yeah. which you're not right. doing, but it's, it's, it's just more accountable. And the increments as you need it. Right. right. Well, does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And I think, I think it would fine. make um, our treasurer happy as far as, yeah. um, you know, following the funds. Uh, mm -hmm. Easier there, John. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that would be what okay. Do you think? Yeah. Do you need a motion to say we amend mm -hmm. or something? Or John, did you figure that out? Who's that? 
<laughs> well, wait a minute. Who made, who made the motion? I did. You did. So you amend your motion. <clears throat> so just amend it to 22525. I'm making a motion to amend the. Um, oh, right here it is. Authorize the motion the to authorize the aid and proceed oh, to the next actually, phase. I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're rescinding your motion. I rescind my second. Oh, oh and then okay. you come up with a new motion. Oh, okay. I'd like to rescind my motion from the meeting of April 17th regarding the funding for the next phase of the project at the town. And I'll rescind my second. Now you can make a new motion. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion to authorize VIA to proceed to the next phase of the town law project with the opera funds designated no with op, with with funding now for twenty two four with whatever twenty two five forty five. Twenty two five forty five. It would be our, our you have to say where it's coming from, so it would say our it would be our with funds. opera funds. <clears throat> Okay, that's confusing because it says designated for the lift, but they were not. No, so now I'll go with opera funds. Okay. okay. Second. Any further thoughts, uh, concerns? Anyone want to say that? Pardon me. All in favor? Vote aye. 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 Okay. And um, I'll ask. Um, Carolyn to be sure uh, to make sure people are updated certainly be before every meeting um, or every change on ARPA we just get because they're big enough funds send out hey here's a new ARPA update no uh, it doesn't even have to be that yeah, yeah, the okay. meeting yeah, yeah, just I mean, yeah. it's simple to stick it in an Excel sheet with a column of what we have what we want to designate it and then just print it out and so I would, here it and, is and I'm meeting. sure it's here, and I think we've seen it because I've, I don't have a personal, but I think she's sent out, has sent it out because we have asked before what we've, we've spent. Okay. Um, and then we can start looking at, um, you know, in our next meeting, uh, what we have in the savings reserve. We'll have a little bit better idea, maybe. Um, Actually, we're not going to be able to figure out tax rates, but we can start to look. I mean, it's obviously mm -hmm. quite early, but let's get an idea of what we want to do. If there's any of this uh, savings reserve money that we do want to go ahead, um, because we need to vote on that um, as well. And so we want to put that in our June um, vote that we have for the truck. For the greater. For the, for but, the, pardon me. For the greater. For the greater, yeah. But, yeah. and then, yeah. now we're having RFP for the greater. So that, those will have to be in by next meeting. If the vote's the, the 20th. Well, the 20th, why don't, okay. no, again, no, no. no we, we, we said we could have, um, or maybe thought maybe we could do the vote at the 27th of June. Uh, of June. June. Of, of June. Of yeah. June. Sherilyn, and he emailed today. She said special vote on June 20th. Well, that's what we originally came up with. Right. You and I, but we forgot it was um, whatever day it is. Right. And that's why I suggested the 27th. Monday. Yeah. On Monday, which is Monday, so that's why we're having the 20th. <laughs> but the 20th, the we don't want to have a vote if we're having a meeting on the 20th. Why, why did she put the 20th on this this afternoon? Yeah. And you said, remember, you sent back. Because I sent back, the, it should be the 27th. Um, the vote. The vote. Right, right, the vote should be the 27th. <laughs> Even though our mean, meeting is the 20th, but it doesn't have to be the same day. No, because we can have Even. the vote. Have the um, the uh, you, have a, set in. you have a certain number of days in between the Warren meeting to discuss it to have the right. No, yeah. So it's like ten days or in between, mm -hmm. or but it's got it's got to be Warren no less than thirty or more than forty. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so in that, so we come back 
and um, I'll, I'll look at the dates to make sure that we don't need um, to have a special meeting, but we will have some figure for us to vote on and a reason why for uh, our savings reserve fund. You know, I was thinking it could be a little bit later than sooner, but no, we need to have that so that we can have that on the warning in, it, in enough time. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. oh. And we will say how much we're going to be using of the saving reserve fund? Yeah, we, we say like up to, you know, whatever it is that we decide on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's see what we do. Sure money, money in this fund shall only be withdrawn with voter approval by the passage of a separate article at a duly warned regular or special meeting of the town. So... And that's just I would imagine we, we would have to have a, a, an exact number. And yes, that's sir. just to lower the tax rate. Yes. And we've got about a million dollars in that fund right now. 994,147 and 93 cents. So just so I understand, are we getting the RFP? June 20th or by May 15th? Because that's what I was wondering about the 20th. When yeah. It, yeah. And I thought, it sounds to me like um, Martin wasn't really, a, a, he couldn't really put a detailed RFP out. He was working with two firms, basically, right? He's and working he's with both the dealers. To yeah, and he's trying to, you know, get him as, app as apples to apples as he can get. But he, well, that's what I, I told him. He, that's what I, I thought I, you I, said. I, carry on and get those two bids, and you know, no, it, that's have why, something written out as an R official RFP. Right, and he and he does. But I, we told him um, that it, because of the time constraints. It's not like we're looking at the fire truck where Stefan had, you know, six months or whatever it was to look in to make sure right. that this is copacetic to, to that. Um, and that's where we were relying upon our manufacturers to help us out with that. I, I don't think there's, you know, you get a, um, a 785 uh, grader John Deere, there's, there's only so much that you can do with that thing that we're, you know, that Martin will be able to smoke out, you know, and they know that we're not looking for you know, the, the Taj Mahal, but right. that we are looking for a unit that is built to work. Um, and the same with, with Cat, I am sure. So uh, I, I don't think it'll be a long process for them to get back because he's been working with them and it's it's almost fait complete. I mean, she's, you know, said today that, you know, her price hadn't gone down or it went up 40 bucks or something like that. Um, you know, cats was, I think, $15,000 more, the, the preliminary um, that we saw. But I think those are pretty much what you're going to see when you, when you have handed in. Um, but for the integrity of our processes here, we need to do it that way to make sure it's in a sealed bid. And, you know, if cat wants to, you know, kind of knows what the prices are, wants to lowball everyone, well, you know, that's their, their choice. Mm -hmm. I don't see it happening. Um, and I don't know what their availability is anyways. But so if the 20th would, I think, make sense. We mentioned it when she was here. She didn't seem to think that, you know, she would have said something if there was a problem getting, uh, you know, a, mm -hmm. a quote our way, I think, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They probably, I mean, basically, she probably already has one built anyway. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's so it's going to take her. Yeah. It's, a, it's a keystroke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll throw out this option, add this one, and add yeah, this and this and that. Yeah. I, I think that's something like that. Yeah. So I think we can get that back in time so we will know. Let's assume we're going to get it back in time. And uh, by that point, then we will already have the, the, the warning out, obviously, because. And so the, the, the warning will, will state not to exceed this amount, 400,000 yeah. or whatever it happens they to be. They can always sell this based upon the uh, Okay. I think that covers us on that, right? Yes. Um, was there anything else that we were looking at the on, John? It was just those two things. 
Well, she, she didn't throw in the town hall project. But and we can't worry about it because we, we don't have any costs yet. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that's the only two things that we had. Um, yeah, we'll okay. just be the greater and then the savings. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on our current discussion funds or anything that we wanted to handle differently or move forward with? Yeah. Um, so our next meeting we will, you know, we can look at that 386 that we have and we can uh, uh, bring some of these expenses directly to them. And we know at this point, um, or we think at this point, we want to put $200,000 to the, the fire truck, but you know, maybe we decide we want to put less and, and, and use some of that money, something that's coming up quicker, sooner than the fire truck. Okay. So, I mean, the fire truck's on order. We're getting a fire truck. We just, you know, what, when we're paying how are we going to pay for it or not is the, is the question. Or not, not, but how we're going to decide to pay for it. Okay. Um, although, you know, I was going down to um, Berlin Road and I noticed for the state sale that looks like they're selling a used uh, John Deere grader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So that parked out front, that's almost small, that was kind of a small one. Yeah. <sighs> I think it was no, actually, it's pretty good size. Was it? Oh, yeah. I, I, so I was, I, you know. usually see trucks there. Also, there's a big grader. Like, yeah. it's just what we need. You know, with the parts fit. I don't know. Who knows? Um, anything that reports communications? Uh, to Sasha. We worked on the personal policy the last time and I haven't brought back a suggestion on the I turned that off to the Yeah, that was that. just that one question. We talked about it kind of over and over again. But that was my interpretation of what we talked about, and it's this part. If a town employee is called to service as a juror or a witness on a scheduled work day, the town will compensate the employee their regular rate of pay up to but not exceeding their scheduled hours of work for that day. Was that our intent or was our intent basically to say if you're on jury duty, jury duty we're going to pay you regardless? Because that's what the original wording said. It will say the town will compensate employees at their regular rate of pay for the service as jurors or witnesses. So if they get $10 an hour and they're a juror for 20 hours, we can give them that. And Corey had mentioned that, you know, she was scheduled as a juror on a day she didn't work and she didn't even apply for that. No, but, she wasn't looking for that. Right? right. But I think we need to, we need to say that in our personnel policy if that's our intent, because if you don't, somebody's going to say, come in and say, you know, and the example I use is the road crew. You know, if they're working a four day, 10 hour work week and they end up having to do jury duty on a Friday. We don't want to pay them. Well, but I don't think we'll, well... Well, because the town will compensate an employee at their regular rate of pay for service as jurors. So if you're a twelve, twenty-two dollar an hour road crew yeah, guy... Yeah, but that's not, now we're not a scheduled work day, that Friday. So it doesn't... It doesn't say that. It says their regular rate of pay for services as jurors. As opposed to my italicized one, if a town employee is called to service as a juror or a witness on a scheduled work day, the town will compensate the employee their regular rate of pay up to but not exceeding their scheduled hours for that day. Doesn't that, does that seem to clarify it or make it less clear? Because I really don't care. It's whatever your intent is. Actually, I think you're... Uh, Paragraph actually just clarifies the statement. Yeah, that right? sounds. Yeah. If you're yeah, scheduled to work good. four hours that day, <clears throat> then we'll pay you those four hours. <clears throat> if you're not, 
Then because they can still get paid from the state. They still get paid as a juror. As a juror. Right. Right. What we're compensating is if they're a juror, and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. If you're scheduled to work, we're just going to pay you your regular rate of pay. And if they give you extra money for being a juror for those four hours, then that's just a bonus. But I don't think we should open the door to have to say anybody who works as a juror just simply gets paid whatever they do, you know, right. or it gets that subtracted from their from their regular, regular pay. pay. Yeah, it makes it too complicated. It's, it's just it's like if you're scheduled to work, you get paid. Right. Period. And if you can get compensation from them as well, good. Who cares? That's your right. That makes sense. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody. No. no. You know, That's my intent is just you know, if you're scheduled to work and you're going to be on jury, hey, great, we'll pay you. Whatever, whatever, whatever it is that you want. Right, so, so we can either vote on that or you know have her update it. But what, it's completely whatever you guys feel. Why don't you go ahead and, and update that, and then once everything is all everything is updated, we can approve the any changes that have been made. I think that's a good thing, Robert. Yeah. And the other thing I had is on the ACO. Now I know we sent it back to the town attorney for some clarification. I don't, Yep. Did Ron have any clarification on that? He's not working on that. Oh, is it yep, Heather or somebody? Yes. The one who has his notes yes. on the thing? Okay. Okay. I didn't have enough to get it for me. That's fine, yeah. Just forward it to all of us whenever you come up with whatever the changes. I think it mostly was, was whether a law enforcement officer was required to come to actually impound the dog, I think, was one of the critical issues. Right, yeah. And then the other things were just minor definitions anyway. So I think that's the really the attorney question is, does a law enforcement officer have to be involved, an actual policeman have to be involved if the dog is impounded for either dangerous behavior, you know? Because that kind of puts a lot on Stefan, you know. If you have somebody and he's like, yeah, I'm taking does. your dog, you know. <clears throat> you know I, I try to think about the safety of the people doing the work for us. And, yeah, no, I think there's a lot of those situations. Yeah. So. so that was really the thing. So I'll wait on them from that report. That was the only thing I had. Kelly? <clears throat> or did you want something to add on that, Kelly? No, I didn't know. Are we, going, are we talking about... You, because I noticed some of the things you brought up were also in the meeting notes, but we're, we're not at that point, right? Go ahead, Don. What do you have? Well, I'm, uh, just one thing back to uh, what Corey had come in to talk about the, t uh, the, the uh, town hall cleaning and trying to find, you know, because we just had someone temporary. Well, Forgot yes. It. Oh, is it and, and so, um, and you weren't here, obviously, Tom. But there was a couple of things she she, um, she wanted to see if she could want to help to come in and sort of uh, to solidify the position and help to look for someone. You know, maybe if I think what was brought up was that Cheryl and Sasha are so busy. If maybe if you wanted Corey to take it on to try to find someone to do the town hall cleaning, because right now we just have Mary temporarily once a month or something, she would be willing to do that, but can't really do it by taking it away from her, her library hours to right. spend the time looking. So that was didn't really get put in the meeting notes, and we didn't really answer that because we were, we were thinking about it. And then right. also we were talking about whether um, should we combine all the built, you know, our three buildings into, into one cleaning service or continue to have them done by different people or something, you know? And actually the town garage doesn't even have anybody. Right. I mean, maybe once a month we can send someone in there for a deep clean, you know? Yeah. I think it Corey's biggest nice thing, thing was that, you know? that <laughs> it was working no. out. They're fine. They're fine, the town, okay. All people were working out doing the regular kind of everyday cleaning. Her issue was really during the the functions where she well no then the goes, yeah who does the cleaning after yeah. functions too that was her biggest so I mean, and, and, um, and I did reach and out then, to and then should the custodian and the man and, and the and the yeah. manager the person who inspects the rental thing should that be the same person the cleaning person and the checking the rental person for the 
that they, you know, took care of their trash and didn't leave the place to mess or whatever. Well, I think, um, Corey should, my, my suggestion, I think, when that first happened or something, they get done, I was like, have Corey figure that out because when she knows what's going on there and when she's working it, she knows what the function, she knows it gets clean, she can just describe to whoever, this is what happens, and not kind of guessing what happens. She knows what happens and knows what needs to be done. My only concern is um, that we don't let her hours go over, is it 22 or 3? I'll have to look, because she's... She's, yeah, she doesn't want to go, but, you know. Right, like, she's, she's budgeted for 17. Right. And, um, and it's not even the dollars for a couple of weeks or a month to figure this out. It's, we ended up having to pay Vemers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 20 hours. As long as she can keep it, you know, 21 or less, in addition to her regular, you know, her hours. So, like, be, a, I mean, two, a or, two or three extra hours, or, you know. Right, and it should be, I mean, it yeah. should be a process that, you know, it'll take a while, all right, let me figure out the job description, how it's going to work, advertise it, talk to some people. You know, it's right. not going to be a ton of time. And then if she needs to be that person that does the inventory and does the um, assessment of whether someone should get their... Uh, Rental money back, whether is it her or is she comfortable enough with whoever well, she hires to that's going to come in this, yeah. you know, and make it very clear and make that in the job description, mm -hmm. right? This is what you're going to be doing. In addition, you're going to be inspecting the place when someone leaves, mm -hmm. and it's going to be your, so you need to be able to have a, be a thinking person too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to authorize more hours for her to be able to do that? Is that the idea? Yeah, a couple, you know, yeah, up to a couple hours, two to three that. hours yeah. a week for the next you know, a month, month to figure it out. Yeah, because they need to find something, right? Okay. Yeah. And, but not to exceed... 21 or whatever you said. 22. Yeah, 20, let's put 22. I think you can go up to at least 22. Okay. Um, and quite frankly, I've looked at her hours. She's been around that anyways. Okay. So just make sure she does not mm -hmm. go in addition okay. to these longer weeks of men. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, 16, 22 and a half, 20 and a half, 20 and a half, 21, 19, 22 and a half. So, on the most part, she's staying there, but okay. we can keep it to it. So, we're not paying more than I need to. Don, did you have anything else you. Well, just a. Uh, um, well, let's see. Um, Wednesday, we're meeting with uh, some people from District 6, V Trans District 6. John will be there as well to. See about moving, you know, seeing if the state can help us move the RSFS sign, the one that's by the fire station. Right. But incidentally, driving into town today, was, was that, that our trailer? Is that yeah, our trailer? Yeah, the state put that up. That's our trailer. Yeah, wow, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also that's where the just that's where the RSFS sign goes yeah. too. But yeah. so it can be on the state road. That's yep. good. Yeah. I got in the permit uh, that I submitted to the state from Route Two and Route One Hundred. Oh, that's perfect. Great. Good that's job. great. Yeah. Look, it's quite. It really boom. It flashes yeah. right at you. Uh, Stefan may have something to say. Stefan. Um. So yeah, I uh, I put out the speed trailer this morning uh, just to try to figure out the software part of it to figure out how to capture the data. So that was kind of a test thing and I figured it'd be perfect for you guys to see it up and running because all but one of you had to pass it to get down <laughs> to the meeting tonight. Um, well, just... I know there was some discussion of bringing it to Route 2 or something. It's seemingly ready to go, um, so it's up to you guys kind of where you want it to go and, and whatnot. Okay, yeah. Well, at this point, I think it needs to be um, still registered, Stefan, so we don't want to go too far with it. Right. Okay. Um, but we're insured. Yeah. Is that correct? We are yeah. insured. Um, so that's a good spot right where it is, Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Move it down. Thank you you know what, Stefan, do you think it's worth, um, should we get a cable or a chain so we can hook it to any nearby object, or what do you think? Uh, so I did, uh, today I went and bought a, a lock for the hip, 
so it locks around the hitch so somebody can't just back up to it yeah oh good job and drive away with it hooked up properly yeah uh, yeah so i don't know if that's good enough or should we have a short piece of change so if i am around something that i could attach it to or yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to take it, they're going to cut through a lot yeah. of pair of bolts. I think, I, think, anyway. I think what you did was probably a good trail hit the locks. They're kind of hard to get into anyway. Yeah. That'll keep the honest people out. Yeah. Um, Anybody else going to take yeah. it? So I think the, the, the more the worry is someone doing damage to it than you know, I think stealing it. It yeah. does have GPS tracking, too, right. if somebody does steal yeah. it. As long as they don't disconnect yeah. all the batteries right off the bat, we can figure out where it went. Right, and that's more about opportunity, and yeah, if you take I away that opportunity, vandalism is know. what Tom, uh, our constable, said is yeah. more a vandal vandalism yeah. issue. Right, and that's where we may want to. I think here at night in the village, it's probably okay to leave yeah. at night. I don't know if I'd leave it at night on Pony Farm or right. Mountain Road or Mountain Road or any yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's kind of a pain in the butt for whoever's putting it out, but. It may be well worth it if we. Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to think about it. Yeah, we'll have to feel. diligence, I think. At this you know. point, why don't you leave it the village and you can move it around either end of the village, Stefan, and if you think of anything else, you know. Um, you know by I think for sake, I mean, you know, you want to keep yeah, it by school and stuff. Really, that's the key. You know, school bus stops and things, I think, are really key for the. You know, speed and stuff like that. So. Well, the data today we got somebody at 46 in that 30 mile an hour zone. So, yeah, yeah I'm not surprised. So, the data so works. 40 in the 25 zone is not yeah, Sasha was the first one pulled over yeah. by a sheriff when we employed she them. She ran to so. Red Hen real quick for like a <laughs> or whatever or something. But it's easy coming around that corner. And it is. I mean, is. so this will be really good, I think, for people to. That's what Make them aware. That sign that, yeah. You know, I tend to be super aware, and it, it caught me. So, like, <laughs> at like 38. I mean, I was really surprised. There you go. Yeah, so 41's not so high. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that we, we are meeting. Yeah, yep. yeah. No so problem. we are meeting uh, Martin and John and Michelle Redman and another gentleman is coming to see about physically moving that sign. Yeah, okay. that one there. Then um, we filed this 111 permit for the crosswalk in the village uh, to Ed Pierce, who um, actually, I, I, I don't know why I didn't do this. John got the email. I should have forwarded it to the rest of the board, but then I will later tonight or tomorrow. But basically, um, uh, Mr. Pierce came back and said, well, um, are you, you know, are you going to do, you know, the there was a lot of details, you know, are you going to do the ADA cut to the sidewalk? Are you going to supply the signs? And of course, on the post office sign, when I had talked to one of his, you know, someone else who works at VTrans, we had come up with that. We could just, since we were just trying to put this in, not temporarily, but to put it in ahead of the possibly future sidewalk, that we could just cut the, there's a piece of wood curb there, and then when we could cut it and grade it with stone and grade stone and go up to the sidewalk, you know. And on the other side, of course, we'd have to rework the curb and the concrete. We would have to get the signs and, you know, the potential, so when we talked last week, the potential, we wouldn't be able to do this without getting a, another grant for like Bicycle Ped, they have, that's in our committee, there's, we discovered the transportation committee, there's, there's funding for just something like this. But anyways, the response from it back from Ed Pierce was, I don't know if it was a game breaker or not, but you know, in other words, because there's all rules and regs that both, eight, both sides of the crosswalk have to have all the specifics of the of the meet all the specifics of the ADA requirement. You know the little ramp but thing we, and the sides we knew, and we all knew that. that. Well, yeah, we knew that, but yeah, well, from like okay. when I met with this I, gentleman, Chris Hunt, he gave me the impression that we could maybe not do it on that side, as I just said a minute ago. But now we would have to build it all out. Oh, wow. And then that's building out ahead of the made potential wastewater, and you know. All that. Well, I, I, I spoke with Chris. Well, I, I gave him a call. He, he didn't seem to think that would 
there would be any problem. He didn't think it would hold any, anything up. Chris Hunt, you spoke yeah. just recently. Yeah, last week. No, I will not hold anything up, but you'd have to build out that whole side too, which, you know, it's not the same detail as the sidewalk that's existing at the post office when we're there and all that. That's what, that's what he was saying. We right, could maybe right. do temporarily, you know, not temporarily, but we could do it that the way I just described a minute ago. And yes, we knew we would have to do the whole other side. So, uh, anyways. So it doesn't look real good because uh, it, the information you've got, you would have to build a pad on the... Both sides, yeah. Right. We have to do the work on the side, the future sidewalk side to the way the future sidewalk is going to be, which okay. is not in stone yet, and we're still waiting to do the wastewater. So, you know, it was a question of how much we, you know, we want to see where that's coming. So, the long and the short of it is we might just have to not do that this, this year. We might have to just wait another year before we can put that in. They are going to paint the other crosswalk this spring, because it was already there, there existing. Yeah. yeah. That's district six is going to paint that. So I don't know. We can go over with the drawings maybe after tomorrow's Wednesday's meeting and take another look at it, just you and I with the drawings. Yeah. Let's see if it's not dead yet. So that was an okay. update on that. Okay. Um, I met with Sparky Potter for the byway signs that are pretty faded. And, we discussed those, and, and you know, it was funny because it was a really, really rainy day, and of course, in the rain, but they looked great, you know. <clears throat> but the next day, I, looked, I saw them, and it was like you can't even read them. So we went over a couple of different scenarios of how that could be corrected, and I said, he's going to forward me some costs. I told him we were, I don't think it was going to be high on the list for this year, but you know, it would be good to have the information. Um, then I was just going to ask kind of about that email that we got about uh, the folks on Cobb Hill uh, who wanted to, you know, the whole oh, thing about a private uh, road. Yeah, we can just certainly discuss that. You know, and so I don't know if we want to just have that on our agenda for another day to start talking about trails again. Okay. And, um, can I get you some know, background on that? And Dave Stapleton, you know, I know the planning uh, uh, planning board's trying to work on it, so maybe we had... Well, on, maybe, on that you know, particular one... Yeah, can we just discuss it briefly? So with, that... And I, I kind of seem like I'm somewhat familiar with it. So. Yeah, well, it's just... And Sasha, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, George and um, Tracy... Tracy, yeah. Their road, they don't have a private road. It's Cobb Hill is what they're asking, right? I believe so. Yeah. The DRB said something about the, the residents already existed on a private road. So I don't know if they have to access what's considered a private road to get to their driveway or not. It was a little, no. you read that deep. They were on the, they're on, they're on, the they're on a town, yeah. they're on Cobb Hill. Okay. But the tr trail, they're on the trail right. part. So she's saying she wants to make it a private Cobb road. Cobb road right? ends that and then it becomes legal trail, trail number, right. whatever it is. Right. But you can't make it a private map. road because that would no longer, it would no longer be a trail for the rest right. of the duration. Well, if you throw up the own. trail. So they, so just I want some background on it. So is this a situation like I had down with the schoolhouse? Did these people build this four bedroom house and now they live in it? No, they, they got a clear happened, cut. They, okay. they agreed to. Because what appears to happen is, is there was a house that was already there and they got a curb cut to add something. It was kind of vague. And the original zoning was designed for a four bedroom house, but the owner at 1760 only built 1,200 square feet. And now it seemed like they were converting the permit for the four bedroom house to be now the primary residence. And then, the, right, you, you gotta read the DRB thing. So now the four bedroom house is the primary residence. And the secondary residence, which was there first, is now considered an outbuilding. Right. But I think so, the, bottom, the bottom line is this well, really has nothing to do even with those houses. They want it just Cobb Hill as a private road. So in other words, as it comes to 
um, their place or what did they say and their name to trace it to the neighbors. Yeah. All right, we would stop Cobb Hill being a, a town trail. It's now going to be Tracy and George's Lane or something like that. Right. And, and it is just not possible because right, the Cobb road Hill continues. goes all the all way, the way through, to the, the yeah, other side. It goes all the way to the other side right, of town. To the other right. side of town. Right. And it's, it's a through trail. Right. Um, if know, it was maybe a, all the people on that mean, road would like to, yeah. they, they could all yeah, but that's not take even it over point. and it could be a private this, road. The state wants you mm -hmm. to have private trails because if we make it a private road, then the town, if we wanted to develop further, we'd have to buy the right away back yeah. from those people. Yeah, we, we don't want they to built a house on a, on a class four road knowing it was a class no, four road. No, not a class four road. This is, a, this is called well, a, legal a legal trail. trail. It's, it's even different. Worse. Yeah, it's yeah, right. It's right. Worse. I mean, that's right. why I had a yeah. DRB because they had right. a permit they, they shouldn't have gotten. That's, that's what I, my point is. It seems like, it seems like they mm -hmm. built a house without a permit. <clears throat> It's really and it not pissed off some of the, no, one of the no. neighbors, and now they got a restraining order on this neighbor. So no, the no. neighbor lives in another part of town. Well, he was yeah, at was the just, DRV hearing for some reason. He must have yeah. some. Like, he's, he's off in here, so we're oh, okay. okay, okay. All right, I'm not trying to upset anybody. I was put in the same predicament by it the just, DRB. Somebody built a huge renovation without approval, without any kind of permits. And then went to the DRB after the fact and got approval for it. That's right. That tends to make residents angry, and I can nope. see this guy getting well, angry. And now they want to make this a private road. The guy that might use this guy, you know, this trail for hunting or something, that would tend to <laughs> piss <laughs> me <laughs> off. Even more. So well, I, again, I, I'm trying. I don't know the right. background. Well, I'll give you some okay. background. So again, the, the people who bought the property were not at fault. They they. Or they, actually, I think it was the person before them applied for a permit. Uh, our zoning administrator at the time, David, gave him a permit. Oh, okay. So All right. they got the permit. <laughs> oh, okay. And right. so in January they, or whatever right, it was. Right. Okay. It was. They should have got it. Um, however, all right. So they get it. They build the house. I mean, okay. that's what they did. And I don't blame them. Right. And, yeah. Um, and then it went so to the DRB. Yeah, it went to the DRB, to and they could have. Okay. Uh, not even conform with the DRB at this point. Okay. okay. But they're trying to work with everyone, and they came okay. in here. Uh, they've been actually very good. Okay. Good. Um, as in improving the road, and they improved the road. Yeah, I understood that the whole trail. Yeah. Okay. And I think they just wanted to make it more private because um, this Travis Blodgett, who she mentioned, who she's okay. had a restraining order. Okay. Um, quite frankly, I've had a restraining order against him. He. Okay. He's, okay. Um, he, okay. he just he likes to like to cause trouble. Okay. Likes to cause trouble. Okay. Um, you know, he's we haven't seen him in six months, but he okay. used to come here and cause trouble. You know, question everything and okay. call any people. any time we're talking about legal trails or class four roads, he's here. Okay. Right. All right, and, that's and good to know. He claims you know, he's I just a, an that kind of he's just okay. this, he's, he's a troublemaker. Yeah. Okay. And, good. Good. Um, okay. All so right. I think she was just sick of having someone over there videoing her. I, I can her. certainly understand it, and, and I would do the same thing. Uh, and and well, they have, I can't say nothing. They yeah. were, they were, you know, okay. just trying to follow. The, okay. The well, I think our options as the town is either to make it a completely public road, right, or. Well, I, I, I say not. we just don't do anything. Yeah. Don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and just let them know. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't. <clears throat> right. The state. It, it, well, anyone can do it. As a town, we can we can throw up a road anytime we want. Right, exactly. Um, but the state likes you to have legal trails, and they're right. yeah. they, they're yeah. gonna, they're gonna buy. Like to. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, yeah. Want, and if okay. we decided right. that we want, just so you background, so if we wanted to throw up Cobb Hill, there's gonna be everyone that lives on the other side of it. Anyone who uses it to get to the other side, yeah. is gonna say this. Forget shit. it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah exactly. We're not. We're not doing it. Okay. So it would never. Pass the house there anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, all right. Well, then I say we. That's all we can do. So there's the. Yeah. What about that other Gary Hill road? The guy who wants us to fix his car. Do we we never kind of put brush that down the road too? We're not yeah, responsible. Yeah, we decided to hold off until yeah. Tom was here. Yeah, and I spoke to um, him on the phone okay. a couple different times, uh, or very. I should say, spoke to him. We had messages back and forth. Okay. Um, and basically, you know, I just emailed a message, hey, 
There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And that was it. Okay, you fine. Know, those, lot of, those things like that, people understand people have problems, and then they yeah. typically ask, you know, when the mechanics and the mechanics of accounts never take Yeah. Stuff yes. I was just trying to shield Martin from, you know, he was obviously getting the hard time with the guy and all that stuff, so. Yeah. You know, he gets, yeah. and those, those guys, um, Good. Well, I just want to make sure we weren't going to pay the guy money because he hit a pothole and you know, the no, pothole no. bumper of his Audi fell off. The pothole off. was this big. Okay. Yeah, no, we've had... Okay, great. You know, there were the ones on the other side of Gallagher Acres. Yeah. Service. You couldn't even you know, put a quarter in it. Yeah, and I was, just, <laughs> I was just curious on the Cobb Hill thing and the legal trail. I didn't want a situation where it was like, you know, somebody's coming in and like, you know... Well, now we got a house here, and we want it to be private, and we don't want people walking up our road. No, it's not that at all. Okay. Yeah, so just but that's that's you know that's how it viewed when I looked at it. I don't like yeah, it. optics, you know, optics on that. Yeah, were optics great. were odd. And Robin, one thing we we started to fund, I think two years ago, or you know, no, one year. And this is the second year, is putting some funds away. Because we know on some of these legal trails we need to do some surveying. Yeah. But we don't have the funds yet for it because okay. it's not a cheap thing to do. No kidding. Yeah. And the planning commission, amongst okay. all, a bunch of other stuff that they're working on, is trying to, you know, work on the whole legal trail okay. scenario. Good. All right. You know, right. Figure you know, it out. I'm good with that. Trying to figure I'm, out I'm the best that, yeah. way for, you know, the town to deal with it. Yeah. Because there's lots of pressure to... Yeah, no, I agree. I, can, I think we can just tell those people, you know, we'd love to be able to help you, but we really, it's not in our power. I think the first one we were looking at was off Ward Brook, right? Yeah. Because that one, we're, we're dumping stone up there, and right. it's getting blocked with big cement barriers by the landowner. Like Hog Hollow Road or whatever. No, it's it. not Hog Hollow Tracy Road. Lane or something? Oh, Tracy no, Lane. Oh, no, um, the other side that goes over. No, it's Jeff Ledoux's Lane. Oh, okay. It's connected it up called? in there. It's, I know it's Jeff Ledoux's. Yeah, I can't there. remember what it's called. Yeah, there was that and the trail up at the top of Friedman Hill we went and looked yeah. at. Right, yeah. that, that, that one is less, Yeah, that's less So because it still all yeah. goes to the same, no one argued about where it ended. Right. It was just a one corner. Where, where it goes, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think if, quite frankly, there's a lot of, since we've, we looked at that. You there's been online, a lot of the fires, yeah. It, well, there's online that you can go and there's really pretty good, Landmarks, and you can figure out your surveys. They're, they're doing a good job, but yeah, um, okay. the, the roads and the, the trails that are certainly something that we need to well, continue. Yeah. And then, as um, Callie said, yeah. the one over on Jonesbrook or Wardbrook, whatever yeah. it is. And yeah. I think that was probably yeah. because if we're putting stone into that right. every year, yeah, I think every year we put a little stone in If we're doing that, that we need to in. know where it is and that it's actually open. Right, well, then right. we can, yeah. once we know, we don't yeah. have to put more stone on it either. <laughs> <laughs> so then we can't be. Yeah. So, um, right, that was it. Don, you. did you have anything else? Well, I would just, well, not the last thing, I wish well, Dick was here. Um, he brought the attention about up on the common row here about this uh, mini sort of like a little mini dump or something. Is he just is the health officer pursuing that or we, there's nothing? Is that um, Shane? Shane, Shane yeah. His place? yeah. Yeah. Uh, he called. Didn't Dick? Wasn't Dick in here? Or did he say he was going up to look at that? I think he was involved with it. I, I'm not sure how that. All right, we can. What did we just say? We were going to just let it, leave it be, or something. No, I think we said we were going to try to have the health officer involved, because the only other option was having a whole ordinance drawn up about it. And I don't we don't think have that. I know. I'm certainly not going to support that. I don't, I don't. No, I think no. have Dick go in. No, it is. Uh, God, I thought. Uh, I was here in the office two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, and that was brought up, and he was going to be addressing that. So I think he, he okay. must be on it or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I, when I saw, I saw it come through, I saw Shane, and, and I actually spoke to Shane personally. I you know the guy needs to, you know, just clean this dump up. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, it's claims he is. So you know, I don't know if there's been any if it would work or not. But mm -hmm. um, he had a bunch of scrap metal. He had a story for a pile. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, 
you know, I can follow up with him on that and see if he's been done if it hasn't. I mean, because again, we're yeah. not here to get, Yeah, no, we're not here to bust him. Yeah. You know, okay. we want, you know, health, you know, this we, trash. Yeah, we want to be helpful in getting know, it resolved no matter what. My, my situation neighbor is, is yeah. you know, probably five or six cars and shit hanging all over the place. But, you know, I don't okay. care, you know, as long as it's, you know, there's a smell and there's no okay. hanging and no digging at it, so I don't care. Okay. But, I think we should just let him handle it and let him come back to us and say, hey. <laughs> and you do. Here's the mess. Yeah. Okay. Kelly, did you have anything else that you wanted to <laughs> give us? Um, I would like to get uh, an approval on the meeting minutes for last time. I'll make a motion we approve the meeting minutes of 417. Second. Second. All in favor of that? All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. And I have stuff. Yep. Uh, Speaking of lodges, um, they have a pine tree across from their house, and it was this past winter. They the guys really undercut it quite a bit. So I have been in touch with Northfield Electric. It doesn't affect their lines, um, and and it, uh, also with the TDS. And I and I haven't heard back from them, so I'm assuming it not affect their lines. So bottom line, it's, we would be taking it down. And Martin and I figured it's gonna cost somewhere between two and 3,000. So. Will it hit the house when it comes down? I believe so. And it's on town property? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Mar you know, <laughs> Martin and I had both looked at it before, uh, you know, a few years back and felt that it was okay, but now he agrees it looks pretty bad. It's on down property. Well, it's in the right-of-way. It's in the right-of-way. Yeah. Right so if it's in the right-of-way, but it's on, what's it, Martin's property? It's, it's... Or is it on Blodgett's property? I guess that's Martin's property. No relation it's across to the street. No, I know that. Well, no, I just saw that everyone would I mean, how does it become our problem? I just... I don't know, that's my question. Right? Mm, because it's in the right I guess because it's, it's really in the town's right, down right away. I mean, because we dam it, we hit it when we were plowing or something? Or? Because we it, undercut, it, the, undercut the, the root, yeah, the bank. So oh, that's for yeah. tree service, you mean? I mean, oh, yes, tree service. there's yeah. people on our road that have humongous pine trees that are in the right-of-way, right. that are literally almost on the lines, and they're still there. We're not messing with those. Right. And if those fall down, I mean, they're going to take down their house. So. Huh. Uh, right. Should we ask our I mean, I don't know. It's also, I mean, it's... Yeah. Tell us about go ahead, John. I mean, I mean you know, it, in the in the past, when we've had trees like that in a town right of way, um, you know, we've either the town has taken them down or we've hired somebody. Okay. If if like Martin says, he's something he wouldn't want to tackle. Yeah, that's a big job, a huge so, white pine yeah. like that. They're, they need a crane for that. I mean, they'll have to bring in a yeah. crane. If, it, if they're talking two to three thousand dollars, they're going to pull in a full-size crane. I, mean, I guess we can do an RFP or something for it and get some quotes. But there's only about three or four guys in this area that have cranes that will do tree jobs like that anyway. Blodgett's, is that we said? Who was your tree guy? Or oh no, the Blodgett's the land. Oh, that's the cut, the yeah. person. The like yeah. Barrett's yeah. tree service yeah. would do it. Yeah, that's yeah, Barrett's. There's a couple of good guys out of uh, Waitsfield. I know that do it. But that sounds about right because I've had quotes done on trees where they required cranes. They'd have to close the road and everything. It sounds like right. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just bringing it back to the board. That's all okay. Right. Well, as as as. Tree warden. Maybe time will solve the problem for us. I mean, I'll, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm just going to follow up again with T. Yeah, follow yeah, up with them. Follow up. Um, 
I, you know, I just... You know, if they, you know, the kid coming in here all the time really being really disruptive and, uh, you know, has been a jerk to us for years. I, I mean, I just, quite frankly, I hate doing things for people like that. Personally, um, you know, as a board, as a town, I mean, you know, they were coming in here calling us names and, you know, we're idiots and we're this and that. And then next thing you do is you get an email from, hey, please come and cut a tree. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, uh, but if we have a responsibility of a town and we have to do it, you know, that's, we can't let our personal um, uh, feelings for you know, somebody you right. know, jeopardize. For that, or jeopardize. public safety is, you know, public safety is the one thing. Well, that's, and that's what, the, that's pretty much what, what the right, the right of way is, is, is yeah. Responsibility of the town. Man, yeah. So. Because, I mean, if the tree fell when somebody was driving through there, yeah, so it's it's more. It's not their, yeah, their concern because it, you know, it's going to hit their house. But I mean, really, it's our concern is the road. True. So, so why don't we go ahead and look at um, contacting the tree services? Mm -hmm. You know, John and Sasha, and find out yeah. who can do it and when they can do it. And yeah, we find out if it's. Like information is it completely in the right of way? Is it partial? Oh, it's in the right. Of way? It's it's okay. sitting like right there on the road. on the road side. Oh yeah, that's, that's right it there. Okay. That's why they don't undercut the bank. And, okay. And as I said, I mean I've had other situations when I spoke with Martin about trees, um, like uh, Lewis is Henry Lewis had asked me, and Martin looked at the tree and, and says, I, I'm not in favor of cutting it down this time. It, he thinks it should go. So. Okay. Well, if he does, and it's, he's the guy that's out there, yeah. um, then that's and it's our responsibility. Then let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. We don't have any choice. Um, you know, we'd probably rather not. But you know, again, if it's our responsibility, go ahead and just pull the trigger on it. Right. Sasha, I can send you a name later of someone you can reach out to. And Sasha, can you I think double can. check also to make sure that is Martin's property? Yeah, because uh, Don, because you I, got someone. I, I, for some property. reason, I thought right. Blodgett just owned the other side, but he's, he's it's got to be it's got to be Martin. But he he took down a huge tree for me, so. Oh yeah, so that's a trip too. It could be a tree guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It could be a, a little, you know, could save us some money. Yeah, yeah. He's it's very good. And he has insurance and all that. Yeah, no. It might, so not, so might not cost us. Take it down in levels. Yeah, right. yeah no, he climbed. It's amazing. I mean, I could show you some pictures. Oh, I know. I was tree took down, down from me. So I think Lone, Lone I Pine. I could do it. He's up I think there. Lone Pine is about 3000 So He's all tied in. This certainly is not one hand. As big as that. What? I said Lone Pine is about oh. 3,000, so I, I... It's not as big as it's that. It's not as big as oh, that. No, no, no it's not. Uh, uh, this will be good. We could send... Uh, okay, yeah, that will be good. Yeah, good. I'll, okay. I'll copy both of you guys. Okay, good. Yeah, that will be good. Thanks. Um, done so they're safe. And when, when Doug Reed brought these plans in, Ray Daigle contacted me and said, you know, what's going on with this? You know, ch changing entrances and everything else. That would put this whole project on hold, and so, you know, we, we can't do that. It's a little bit late for that. So, um, so Ray and I decided that, you know, it's okay, you know, Doug can bring the plans in if he wants, but, you know, this- No, that's why I figured yeah. that, yeah, yeah, there's no sense in really getting into it. I think we're, you know, in the car now. It right. sounds like, though, at least the, the bus circulation can maybe, um, what, what he's talking to me, because, you should see the traffic back out onto 100. Well, that's true too. Know, yeah. right. um, when they come, people come to pick up their, um, uh, you know, their kids, the, the kids, <laughs> the, stu the students, or whatever, the children, their children, and it's really it goes all the way down past Hurdle Road or the other way. And, you know, I mean, I think if we could see if we could look at that to see if we could change the. the he's got a good idea for the the bus flow. So right. I haven't yeah. looked at the drawing yet, but you know what he's described to me sounded like mm -hmm. it should it should be something maybe we could look at to see if we could incorporate that. Yeah, yeah. Kelly, I can't. Kelly made a good suggestion that. Yeah, we could reduce emissions at the same point, and people could just have their kids ride the bus. Well, absolutely. 
and reduce oh, yeah. emissions because then you just have the bus and you wouldn't oh, have yeah. the hundred people who had to drive the kids to school that could ride the bus. I'll tell Ray and look at the plans yeah. if you want to. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, the Financial Review Committee met. Unfortunately, I went to, the, to get on the meeting. My computer was soaking wet. So I, I didn't do it. Again, I had to find out where the leak was coming from. So I missed the meeting. But bottom line is they, would, they don't want to use any of the ARPA money. They want to don't want to reduce any of the money for the fire truck and just just fund the uh, the the, uh, the greater without ARPA funds. Okay. So no ARPA for greater. Right? No ARPA for greater. No ARPA for save greater. Save or continue with the, the, the two hundred thousand for the fire truck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Yeah. They didn't want to reduce the amount there and then put some toward the greater. So just, but I mean, we may want to. Right. Okay. <laughs> reduce that number. Okay. But, okay. Good. All right. And that was that. And, that. and, um, and actually, this is more old business, but I have this afternoon I got the proposal from CVRPC for the clerk of the works. Oh, nice. Okay. So. Um, Sasha, will you be the point person on this? If she can send that out to us, we can take a the look at RFP, it. Yeah. <coughs> so here, here. There you go. So is that, is that anything else, Joe? That's it. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything else on the agenda that we need to address. Um, if there's anything that anyone has, I'd be willing to, but I think we're all good. Good. So I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? What's that? Oh, signature, of course, yeah. Right. So we'll adjourn after. Oh, um, sorry. All in favor, would I? Aye. 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 Brothers excavating. And then I got um, the Gunner's permit on the top as well, the SI extended. Oh, and there's the last page. Meds in the middle of the night. 
That's a bummer. How old is it? Was Clark getting paid for Royal Army? Yeah. 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 Thanks for working there for funds and Don for changing that. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Robin, thank you for the change on that personnel file. I did all that. And that uh, added. Everyone, thank you. So, everyone, have a good night. Everything's done. Good, Jerry. Maybe a jerk, yeah. No, okay.